Hello, everybody. How we doing today? Might help if I uh, put some headphones on so I can hear what's going on. Hello, everybody. How we doing today? So what's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me today for this uh, question and answer live stream. It is awesome having you all uh, trying to keep up with uh, the comments. I've seen a lot of people post some questions. If you've got some questions that you would like me to answer, uh, you can throw it in the chat here in just a few minutes. And uh, we will get that taken care of. Just uh, put it in all caps. That way, uh, when I scroll through the chat, I'll be able to find your questions pretty easily. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll take care of that here in a moment. Uh, see if I missed anything real quick. Let me just kind of scroll up. Yeah, I'm just kind of looking at all your all's comments. So bear with me. How is everyone today? Give me a drop a, a comment in the uh, the live chat. Let me know what country you're in. I'm, I'm really curious as to uh, where you guys are watching from. I just uh, put out a podcast today with uh, Mike from Mike's Exotics, and we were talking about uh, just different uh, the differences in keeping tarantulas and other exotic pets in, in other countries. He's in uh, South Africa, so we were kind of comparing and contrasting, uh, you know, just how, you know, with the price of tarantulas, what species you can keep, uh, you know, which snakes and, and scorpions and stuff like that are available. So, yeah, it looks like we got some, we got uh, Silence the Gods is from South Africa. Uh, UK, Rocky Mountain Spider Freaks out there in Canada, somebody from the Czech Republic, Germany. Oh, man, we've got all kinds of places. The Netherlands, yeah, somebody's in Ohio, right on. We're not too far away from each other, <laughs> right across the uh, the river in West Virginia. The Netherlands, oh, wow. Yeah, people from, hey, somebody from Pittsburgh, Kansas. Very cool. That is awesome. So, yeah, we'll be uh, answering some questions here in a little bit. Also got a bunch of stickers and stuff uh, that probably going to do some kind of giveaway for. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, so we'll do that later on in the stream. Um, but yeah, so yesterday, um, I recorded a podcast with, uh, uh, Coyote Peterson from, uh, Brave Wilderness, which was, uh, really exciting. Never thought, uh, I would get a guest like that on the podcast so soon, but it was just kind of a fortunate turn of events and, uh, he agreed to come on the podcast. So I got to talk to him for about an hour and I'll have that podcast out next week. So I'm pretty excited for you guys to hear that one, but I was uh, getting ready for the podcast, you know, like combing my beard, washing my face, making sure everything is, uh, I, I look presentable. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I noticed that my mustache was like really overgrown. Like it was, it was covering my lip. I was like, I'll trim it up a little bit and, and was focused on thinking about like what I'm going to say, what kind of questions I'm going to ask Coyote Peterson and not paying attention to what guard was on my beard trimmer. So <laughs> I just kind of looked at it and it was gray. And, uh, I, I didn't actually check what length it was and went to trim my mustache and just, zoop, and it was like all gone. <laughs> so I just had like one chunk of hair, like cut down to, it was like a, a, a two, one millimeter or three millimeter, something like that. It was like the, 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 uh, the closest, uh, guard that I had. <laughs> so I was like, well, this is not good. I want to shave the entire mustache now. <laughs> I mean, there's still a little bit of hair there, but it's definitely not that the thick mustache i've had for years and i was like oh, i can't believe i did this right before recording this podcast uh and my wife comes home from work that night first thing she says to me is like what, what happened to your mustache <laughs> you look amish now i was like thank you <laughs> thank you so much it was very nice <laughs> but yeah we got people from scotland what's going on uh william park uh what's up justin thomas arthropod ambassadors i cut my bangs too short just got my license <laughs> i feel that Cornwall UK, thank you very much, Victoria. Uh, let's see, can't wait for the podcast, says Stefan. Yeah, it's I even got to like watch it. Like we recorded it yesterday, and I had to get this uh, today's podcast edited and uploaded. Uh, and and after this stream, probably later on this evening, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to start the editing process on that podcast, and I'm going to clean it up a lot because I don't know why, but I think it was I, I got thrown off my game by shaving my mustache off right before we recorded, but. Uh, and then just having somebody, I mean, he's got like 18 million subscribers on YouTube and shows on like discovery and animal planet and stuff. So it just, I, I, I think I got a little nervous talking to him. So I'm going to have to stammer, I stammered a little bit. So I have to uh, clean that up. But <laughs> Stephen Woodward wants to know how come you can't buy tarantula cribs in the UK? Uh, from what I've understood, uh, talking to them, the issue is the shipping. Like, uh, it, it ends up costing like as much or twice as much as the actual enclosure it would cost to ship it anywhere outside the country with customs. And, and they're, they're just, they're, they're not heavy, but they're big, you know, especially with all the packaging and stuff. It just, uh, it's very expensive to ship. So I think, uh, last time I talked to him about it, 
they were looking to find someone over in Europe to manufacture them to their specs so they could ship them from there and, and they would be able to do it that way. Um, well, let's see. Let's just kind of scroll up here. We'll answer a couple questions uh, right off the bat. Oh, let's see. This one goes back to the first one on, on my chassis. We got, uh, what is the longest tarantula pre-molt you have ever witnessed? How old and what species was that? Oh, man. I would have to say it probably my grandma stole a rosea. Uh, I mean, it was, it was full grown adult. She was probably like 15 years old, 20 years old, something like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, she, I mean, it would, she would go like three years sometimes in between molts. Like it was, it was very rare. She would molt and, you know, she would go like, I think the longest she went was maybe 15 months or something without eating, uh, as I was waiting for her to molt. So and it took, it took a while. Let's see. We got a, a, what, a question from Chloe Woods. She uh, says, have you gotten or want an eight-eyed sand spider? They seem so cool. It seems like they're venomous. One of the most potent with spiders, but their deadliness. Uh, yeah. I think it would be cool. I love watching the videos of them, especially when they're digging in the sand. I think that would be a cool species to have. But I think a lot of times with those smaller spiders that are deadly, like, I mean... It, they're pretty, also pretty easy to keep securely. So I don't think you'd have to worry too much about that. Well, let's see. Scrolling through, looking for questions. There we go. Any, uh, Minette Brink asks, any suggestions for a starter tarantula? A tarantula that I could handle. Love from South Africa. Uh, well, I mean, if you're looking for a tarantula that is docile, uh, docile, so you can handle it a lot more, I would have to say, uh, you should go with the Alfana Pelma calcodes. That's one of my favorite tarantulas, and mine are very docile. I don't think they've ever kicked hairs at me. Um, so, I mean, that's really cool. Uh, the issue that you have with those, though, is um, uh, they take forever to grow. So, if you get a spiderling, it, it's going to be like 10 years before it's like a, an adult, you know, or at least a, a size that you can handle it, uh, and or at least enjoy its colors. So, if you can get a juvenile or an adult, I, you, that would that would be the way to go. They're very cool. Very cool tarantula. Right. What else we got here? To Marion Williams. Thanks so much. I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. Um, what we got? Slowly scrolling. Trying to get back down to where you guys are right here. Scroll through the chat. There we go. Oh, let's see. Arachno Boss says, do you keep le leopard geckos? I just recently gotten into them and have two rarish morphs. Do you have any tips? I do keep uh, leopard geckos, but I don't have like any rare morphs. Um, I mean, they're, they're just like, they're leopard geckos my kid got from uh, the pet store. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it just said like assorted geckos. Uh, I actually keep mine on, and you know, it gets really controversial apparently when uh, you're keeping geckos. There's a couple different methods of keeping them, and those people seem very um oh what's the word i'm looking for uh they're, they're really hardcore into that type of husbandry and think everything else is wrong so some people just think you should keep them on paper towels or tile other people uh the carpet uh, and then some people keep them bioactive uh for a long time i kept mine on like that reptile carpet and then i guess it was probably about a year ago i got some of the uh, bioactive uh kind of like kits from the bio dude for leopard geckos and i've got them set up in that and i keep Two of them, they're each in like a 20 gallon long enclosures and they seem to be doing really well. I was having some issues with molting, uh, they, they, like the, the molt around their toes was kind of getting stuck. But when I moved them into that bioactive setup, I haven't had any problems with that. They, they shed very nicely. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. So that's how I, I like it. Um, and one day I'll have to do a video on them, planning on doing that in the future sometime. Uh, but, you know, reptiles aren't my area of expertise. If, if you could say I have an area of expertise. All right, let's see. Uh, Stefan says, how old is your oldest tarantula? Uh, right now, I, that's a tough one. Um, I had a rosea for a, 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 like a rose hair tarantula for a long time, but it passed away probably about a year ago or so. Uh, and then the, probably the oldest ones in my collection I bought as an adult, so I don't know how old they were then. Uh, I got a Pamphibetus uh, species platyoma. That one's probably, I don't know, like maybe 15 years old or so. Uh, other than that, quickly looking around I, I i couldn't really tell you uh maybe my therapos a sturmy i think it's probably it's over 10 years old let's see chloe woods says do you have any gecko species 
if not do you ever want any i do i do have uh two leopard geckos um i got one's like a greenish color green and black and the other one's you know that kind of i don't know that yellowish tan color i've got a uh giant day gecko and uh hopefully in the near future we'll be getting a crested gecko i talked to somebody that breeds them they said they're going to send one out there to me after my video deal with uh wiccan's wicked reptiles so i was uh because i had said something about one to have a, a crested gecko and they're like oh we got plenty we'll send one out there to you so i'm, I'm kind of stoked about that i've seen a lot of people uh in the chat from south africa today so that's pretty cool uh, i just put out that pet that uh podcast with mike's exotic we talked a lot about south africa and probably made a full of them out of myself uh, just because i don't know a whole lot about south africa but he was he was a, he was a great guy very funny very easy to talk to and uh really explained some stuff for me uh, let's see james says do you have any resources or suggestions for pittsburgh area keepers oh man resources i I'm, i don't really know to be honest so i know there's like one pet shop outside pittsburgh and uh i can't remember what it's called even um uh, I, I have a friend out there named megan was telling me about it i still haven't gone and seen it because of covid and everything but I know there's at least one exotic pet store out there, um, but I've never been there. Uh, I just heard that it's uh, a little expensive, but you know, you don't have to pay for shipping and they have like full grown adult tarantulas. Um, as far as like resources or suggestions, I have gone to the steel city reptile expo a few times. Uh, that was really cool. It was like the, uh, the ice plex or something like that. Uh, and I hear there's a few other good expos out in that area. But um, like I said, I just I haven't really gone anywhere the past year but just kind of been hanging out here at the house oh, let's see cb reptiles all what we got here arachno boss says cb reptiles all day they're amazing if you need a reptile go through them yeah i actually have a link in uh, the description of all my videos uh if you want to help support the channel just click that link uh it's like an affiliate link so uh, you know, whatever you buy uh like a fraction of that got like a i don't know like five percent or something comes back and supports the channel but they do got some good geckos, ball pythons, chameleons, stuff like that. Uh, they seem like really good people. Uh, let's see what other questions we got here. Can you keep a tarantula in a storage container as a cat? Definitely. I know a lot of people that keep them in um, like uh, those like plastic tubs, like Rubbermaid tubs and stuff like that. You definitely can. It's probably the most cost effective um, enclosure that you can get. And it make, it's really easy to like lock it down drill in the holes or, you know, add ventilation screens and stuff like that. The only downside to them is like the reason I don't use them is because you can't see in them very well. They're not the best for display that usually that plastic is kind of cloudy. Um, and and I, I like being able to just kind of walk up and, and observe them like they're in a zoo. So, I mean, uh, you know, if you're, if you're looking to get cheap and expensive, but good quality enclosures, you definitely can use the storage containers. All right. What else we got? Rocky Mountain Spider Freaks. If we sent you a Rocky Mountain Spider Freak onesie, would you wear it? I would not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't think a grown man that looks like me should be wearing a onesie. That, that, would, that would leave nothing up to the imagination. All right. What spider are you most afraid of? As Victoria. Oh, man, that's a, that's a tough one. I would have to say probably the Sydney funnel web spider. Those seem uh, pretty aggressive and uh, very venomous. So. That is definitely one that I don't want to. I don't want to mess with. Uh, I've had more than one person leave comments asking me to cover that in a species-specific video, like talk about the care and husbandry and all that kind of stuff. And I just, uh, I, and one, I don't have access to one. I don't even know if they, you know, where I could get it. Uh, but if I could get it, I probably would not bring it into my house right now, especially with a kid. And I want something that's going to send somebody to the hospital. Uh, and and I don't know. They're just they're especially if you get it male. I, I from what I understand, their venom is very very powerful. All right, what else we got? Oh, here's a good one from Justin. Do you keep trapdoor spiders? I do. I've got uh, three different types, I believe. I got them from um, uh, Peter over at Bugs and Spy Spy Cyberspace. He sent me uh, an A. Stephen Colbert tea, which is uh, uh, like a California. I've got uh, Pacific. I can't remember any of their scientific names, but it's like a, a Pacific folding door trap spider and then another like Southwest trapdoor spider. And uh, they're cool. Uh, like I, I posted some pictures of them. Uh, I got some macro shots that I put on my Instagram. Uh, but as far as like seeing them, I, I don't really see them that often. Like, I mean, obviously they're trapdoor spiders, so they're constantly hidden. And you can see them for a second as they open up the trapdoor and grab their prey and then go back down. But really the only time I could see them is when I'm actually unboxing them for the first time or rehousing them. 
and I can uh, snap some pictures of them. But yeah, I do have a few trapdoor spiders. All right, we got one from. Rebecca says, are you ever going to do an isopod care videos or do you have any tips to keeping them happy and healthy? Um, I, I plan on it in, in the future, like not the near future. I, want, I just started keeping isopods, you know, maybe like six months ago or so. So I really want to make sure I've got my husbandry down before I start sharing my experience about how I keep them because I don't want to lead anyone uh, astray. Uh, but there is a great channel out there called Aquarimax Pets. Uh, if you go check out uh, Russ's channel, he's got care guides on pretty much i mean any any uh species of isopod i've ever looked so like I, I went out and tried to find a care guide for he usually has one and uh you know he knows what he's doing so i highly suggest checking out uh russ's channel to query max pets he's got some good stuff there all right well, i just saw another question pop up sarah says any tips for first-time owners of tarantulas uh, yeah, I've got a, actually a whole playlist on my, uh, on my channel. That's, uh, it's like a new tarantula keeper playlist. Uh, so, you know, definitely t check that out because I think, uh, it, it pretty much anything that any questions that you have, uh, you will probably get answered there. So, uh, yeah, definitely check that out. But I mean, as far as tips, just be patient, um, you know, do your research, make sure they got plenty of substrate and, um, and that they like the doors and everything that like, will lock securely because because they will try to get out yeah, right well, let's see oj exotic says why don't you look into getting more snakes oh because i'm i'm at my max with snakes i got more snakes than uh than i i can really handle at the moment i, I don't want to add anything else uh that's a an eastern king snake california king snake a ball python and a milk snake so that's that's four snakes and i never really had any interest in having any snakes but uh, you know, my wife wanted them and you know, I kind of got hooked and I just want to make sure I can give them the best care possible. So, you know, until I like really kind of get comfortable keeping them and got their husbandry down, um, and have a room, then, you know, I might add more snakes at, at that point. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, let's see. Jazz Lily Josh says, do you have any of the new Therophosini? And if so, are you, how are you keeping them? I don't have any of those yet. Hopefully, I was wanting to get a Therapos and a species Panama at some point. Uh, that would be awesome. Let's see what else we got. What's your favorite color? Says <laughs> a little scuffed. Uh, I would probably be green. I, I'm a big fan of the color green. Obviously, I think all my logos and everything are are a bright green get bit brand what's going on how good to see you in here thanks for thanks for coming and hanging out saying hello let's see what's your favorite color getting my first uh what do you say getting my first versicolor tomorrow inspired by you well, that's awesome steven that is a amazing tarantula i've got one oops wrong one where is it there we go in this enclosure right here it's in that uh that bioactive pelidarium it seems to be doing really well and then i don't know i think i'm blocking it Let me move over I'm, I'm in the way, but I got another Versicolor right behind me. <laughs> All right. Let's see. We got another question from Aid. It says, hi, I'm from Lincolnshire, UK. What was your first ever tarantula? That would be the Gramostola rosea. That was a rosea tarantula. Well, here's a good one from uh, Ant's Kingdom. What is your most angry tarantula or spider? Uh, that would probably, I, it would definitely be my uh, Tilicato Vogans, my female uh, Mexican red rum tarantula. She's just, uh, she's just always really defensive and, uh, you know, throwing me some threat poses and kicking hairs and just generally grumpy. Um, she's the one that I actually did the uh, breeding video on, uh, with <laughs> like last week, she ended up eating the male, uh, which was unfortunate, but yeah, no, nah, but she's, she's, uh, she's a handful. Uh, it's not in, in the second place would be my post Lotharia, uh, um, or not, that one is, uh, she'll slap and make all kinds of noises if i get not but she doesn't do it every time you know it's, it just kind of depends on her mood that day oh well, let's see silence the god says what is your opinion on the sea species electric blue i think they're beautiful i've posted some pictures of mine on my instagram you can check those out uh, but it is a fossorial like i mean some of the chilabrocky species are very cool looking but they're also you can just really never see them that's like the down a downside of keeping fossorials which always kind of bums me out i wish they would they were more visible especially some of the, like the, like the species electric blue. I mean, they're an amazing tarantula, but when you 
can't see them ever. It, 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 I don't know. It's kind of like just having an enclosure full of dirt. Let's right, see what we got here. Tommy says Pacific trapdoor spiders are really cool. Does Peter still carry them? You know, I, I don't know. I, I would think so. I know that uh, because of COVID and stuff, he doesn't have his website updated, uh, which is bugsandcyberspace.com, I believe. Uh, but it, on the website and like on a lot of his posts and stuff like that on Instagram, he says, uh, you know, to send him an email, I believe. Send him an email and he'll send you a, uh, an updated list like uh, of what he has available. So, you know, he might have some. Uh, I just would probably need to send him an email to find that out. Oh, goodness. We've got a super chat here uh, from the Mind Blow. Thank you so much for that. And uh, their question is, do you think that putting all that effort into YouTube is worth it? Uh, I, I'm going to have to say, yeah, uh, because it was something that I really wanted, um, as far as like content, like I was looking for some higher quality, you know, like, I mean, I'm watching, uh, some, some like, I mean, even reptile videos and stuff like that, but also, um, you know, like tech videos on like new phones and cameras and, and, and things of that nature. And like they're very high quality. Uh, and I was like, man, I wish somebody would make videos like that about tarantulas, uh, and kind of got tired of waiting for somebody else to do it. So I was like, I guess I'll do it. <laughs> so, uh, and, and it's been paying off. I mean, I was able to quit my job and, uh, or not really quit it, but <laughs> I'm able to, now, now I don't have that job anymore. I can, uh, rely on this as income and this doing high quality videos and stuff like that he is starting to open up other doors and give me more opportunities, like being able to interview coyote peterson i mean that man has got 18 million over 18 million subscribers on youtube so um hopefully i'll be able to kind of uh, foster that relationship get to know him and and do some stuff like that uh which would be really cool oh check it out wiccan's wicked reptiles in here if you could make any invert into the size of a horse and ride it around at a kid's birthday party which would you choose that would be the vingaroon i think that would be <laughs> would be terrifying to see uh, that large and i think it'd be easy to ride them uh yeah those those huge claws that would that would be a lot of fun and uh yeah at, thanks for uh, leaving a comment adam if you guys haven't seen we have a uh uh a collaboration video there's one on his channel and one on my channel uh, where he, the, he did the uh top five reptiles for tarantula keepers and i did the top five tarantulas for reptile keepers uh there was another super chat back here who was that well, that was rocky mountain spider freaks let me see if i can find that real quick i don't want to miss the super chats uh where did it go i'm still scrolling up there's a lot of a lot of comments <laughs> i've lost yours but I, I know that you sent it rocky mountain i'm trying to find there it is got it <laughs> thank you so much for the two dollars canadian rocky mountain spider freaks i appreciate that how am i so darn cool uh, i couldn't answer that for you um it's probably the beard I'll just, I'll just say that <laughs> I'm not actually cool. I just grew, grew a large beard. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, how is your desk stalker doing after the unboxing of uh, the last video? And that video was, that was probably about a year ago. And that desk stalker did not last more than, uh, like two weeks, something like that. Like uh, I, I was told that if it, molted it would be fine uh but there was a possibility that because of the issues that it had it may die before molting which is which is what happened unfortunately so kind of was kind of bummed about that uh but i have not added another one to my collection um i did get another hot and tata though it was a different species but uh it's still very small and uh but yeah, i'm going to do it some more scorpion videos come up in the near future so you'll, you'll be seeing that pretty soon uh ninja says received my first ever tarantula sling yesterday g polkripes polka peas very cool congratulations let's see uh chloe says do you have or want centipedes or millipedes um uh, let's see i've got um the ivory coast is that what they are ivory millipedes uh texas gold mill millipedes rainbow millipedes um and then i've got like a uh, tiger centipede or like the arizona desert centipede um but i i don't know uh i haven't had the, m the best luck with centipedes i usually uh the ones that i get just uh they aren't i'm very healthy uh from the beginning and i don't know my my it's one of those things like my wife just doesn't like centipedes at all like centipedes and roaches so <laughs> if i get one then i gotta deal with uh her being upset with me for a while so i try to respect her and if she doesn't want them i'm, I'm gonna try not to do that uh, but i do have that one centipede let's see we got another super 
chat here. That is very Bobby Scritter Cave says it's not the beard, it's the ginger hair. That is probably very true. <laughs> it I had to wait till I was in my 30s before uh, having red hair became cool because it was not cool when I was a kid. <laughs> Let's see. Somebody says, Can you talk a little about them? I'm not sure what you mean. Can I talk a little about them? About what? I don't know. We'll move on. Uh, let's see. Looking for more questions. Let's see. We got uh, another one from Ninja. Can I can I keep the substrate of my G Polk Ripe sling a bit wet? Not muddy, but kind of wet. I've been told to keep the humidity up. Yeah, I, I actually have a video uh, about on spiraling care. You can find it in the new tarantula keeper playlist on my channel. And uh, talk about that's a, that, that's actually a good thing to do. Um, you know, don't keep it like swampy, um, but you know it is good to keep them. Like that's why I use uh, jungle mix or reptosoil or uh, you know something like that instead of cocoa fiber because it kind of holds that moisture better and for a longer time and, and definitely helps with the humidity. But that you can't go too far. Like with anything, you can, it's it's about moderation, finding a balance. Uh, you know, if, if you make it swampy and, and then it's gonna get all moldy and it, it just will be too too humid, too stagnant. Uh, but yeah, keeping it slightly damp is good. Uh, Red House says, how do you feel about the way Coyote Peterson treats animals in order to get bit and stung? Yeah, that's uh, that's actually something we, we touched on briefly in the podcast. Um, uh, you know, just kind of about the, oh, I don't even know how to, how, what, what the best word is. Uh, but just like the, the ethics of it. Um, because I, I was asking why you'd never been bit by a tarantula, you know, because uh, I noticed that that was something. And, and that's how it kind of brought up the topic is that he wants to uh you know like like when he's doing a wasp or something like that he captures it and is able to kind of get them in between the four steps and the tongs and kind of take care of it that way and from what i understand and from what he was saying his method of doing it is is what's you know research how researchers would uh hold something like that so he's not actually doing any damage to them or hurting them uh but the reason he hasn't been bit by a tarantula he was saying is because to get a tarantula to get to the point where it would strike you and actually bite you, you would really have to irritate them and upset them. And that's not something he wants to do. Like if he can just kind of hold them and they will sting him immediately out of self-defense, then that's one thing, but he doesn't want to uh, just kind of stress out and aggravate a tarantula to the point that it would bite him. That's why he's, he's never done that at least up to now, uh, which I thought was kind of, it was, it was cool. Uh, let's see. We've got another super chat here. Uh, let me scroll up. All right, so this one is from uh, Ricardo De Leon. I, I think he says, "Do you recommend the avicularia and minatrix or a carabiner versicolor as starter tarantulas? I uh, use eight by eight by twelve exoterra when adults. Uh, if you're if you're wanting to use the eight by eight by twelve, I would definitely go with the carabiner versicolor. Um, the minatrix is an amazing, beautiful, awesome tarantula, but they're a dwarf species, so they don't get more than like two and a half inches or so." And they're very kind of reclusive. Like, uh, you know, I've got one and it spends the like I rarely ever see it outside of its little web tunnel. So if you want a tarantula, it's going to be a good display species. I would, I would definitely go with the Versicolor and it's going to be large enough to, to use that enclosure. Cause I think that'd be way too much, uh, for, for a, a Versicolor or for a Minitrix. So we've got another one from the mind blown. Uh, let's see. One <laughs> what we as viewers fans can do to best support you uh the, the best thing you can do is just watch the video at least like at least 50 percent of the video <laughs> if, if you click on you see my thumbnail in your feed and you, you click on it that's like positive feedback in the algorithm uh so then they, that will kind of get them to show it to more people and if you um watch more than like 50 percent, then that also is another huge kind of uh way of telling the algorithm you like the content so they'll suggest it to more people but even like little things like liking a video leaving a comment like that helps a lot uh, as far as the algorithm goes and um and then if you want to like take your support to a whole nother level i do have a, a patreon uh, you can join there for like as little as two dollars a month it's always linked in the description and that uh you know just kind of like two dollars every month it gets you early access to content some extra content uh that isn't public um, or you can uh, hit the join button down below in any of my videos and become a member here on uh, YouTube, uh, which essentially gives you the same uh, kind of like behind the scenes looks and stuff like that. But yeah, and, and share the videos. That's probably the biggest thing anybody can do to help support 
is uh, just kind of sharing the videos with your friends and other people in the hobby that are, you think might be interested. Because uh, that's that's probably the hardest part about you know making YouTube videos is getting the word out about you know the channel and the videos that you're showing. Uh, so we've got another one from Paul. Uh, another super chat. Thank you. Super chat. And he's just saying hi. I'm from the UK. Brocky Pelma, Smithy owner. Great content. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate I appreciate the five pounds. That's very cool of you. Oh, and my friend Arthropod Ambassadors. Thank you so much. For that. Super chat. What is a moment you found tarantula in everyday life pop culture culture that you didn't expect? such as tarantula tequila i just found tarantula bot battle bots i i don't know anything about tarantula tequila or tarantula battle bots <laughs> i think that's that's pretty cool i think what shocked me the most was uh oh man i don't know if i was watching like jimmy fallon or it was some late night tv and um uh i think it was billy ellish was on there and was showing everybody her pet tarantula and i was like what <laughs> like uh a famous pop singer is keeping tarantulas and showing them to everybody nationally or internationally. That was, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, so that, that would probably, probably be the most surprising pop culture that I did not expect. Uh, see, we've got another super chat from Justin. Super chat. Says Richard, what is the liquid that my curly hair produces and drips from its mouth? Is this bad? Not sure if you answered this. I uh, I'm not sure either. Uh, it, it could be uh, many things. I mean, one, it could be venom. Uh, you know, if, especially if they're stressed out or anything like that, they they may be producing a little bit of venom on its fangs. Uh, a lot of times, when a tarantula eats, it's like it'll eat a meal, a cricket, or something like that, and then like the next day or you know a few hours later, you think it's done eating it and actually like regurgitate some of that. And then like eats it again. I don't know what the heck it's doing, but you know, a lot of the times I've seen people freak out about uh, some kind of weird milky liquid around their tarantula's mouth, uh, you know, around the fangs and stuff. Turns out it's just uh, regurgitated food. So yeah, it, I would say it's probably that. And sometimes when they drink, you know, they just kind of get water because <laughs> they like they stick that, they you know, they kind of stick their mouth. We'll just call it into the water and 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 drink that way. And then you know, they just got like beads of water uh, on them until it kind of evaporates. Um, and that says, what is the the worst experience you've ever had with your tarantulas? Oh man, that, that's tough. Probably, uh, when one dies for an unknown reason, you know, it's, it's always frustrating. There's not a whole lot of information out there. Uh, when it comes to like first aid, you know, you can't really take it to most vets won't even see tarantulas. So, you know, if you got something like a impaction or a ruptured abdomen or something and you're not able to fix it, uh, they really have no option, but just kind of watch it die, which is terrible. Um. So yeah, any, anytime something like that happens or a tarantula dies of old age or through my own negligence, you know, like, um, uh, you know, stupid things like, uh, you forget to close a lid all the way or lock a door and they, they get out and escape. You know, I, that's probably when I beat myself up the most, especially if it's a new tarantula, I put it in an enclosure and maybe the vent hole was too large or something and it escapes. Uh, I beat myself <laughs> up over that for quite a while. <laughs> it's hard to let go sometimes. Let's see. We got a question from that one lesbian. She says, I'm so intrigued to listen to that podcast. Isn't there going to be a video too or no? Yes. Uh, we did record uh, video and audio. So there'll be an audio podcast on Spotify, Apple podcast, Buzzsprout, uh, Google podcast, all that. But then I'll post the video version of it on my YouTube, second YouTube channel, the exotic pet collective. Uh, but then I do sometimes, especially with this video, I'll be doing that is like cutting up the podcast into like a uh, little 10 minute clips or something, 10, 15 minutes and posting that on my main channel. So it'll just be like a, a uh, question and answer kind of thing, just a, a short little clip. And uh, yeah, so, so, so you'll be able to, there'll, there'll be plenty of places to watch it. So yeah, definitely check it out though. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. And he like offered to come back on again in the future, which I was kind of surprised. I mean, I was surprised he was willing to do it in the first place. And then the fact that he was like, yeah, this was great. I'll, you know, if you want to do it again in the future, then, then definitely. Let's see, we got one from Stephen Woodward says, what is the best food for slings? Uh, again that's a that's a question i've actually made a whole video on so spiderling uh how to feed your spiderling or something like that. that's on my channel uh, i go over exactly what type of feeders i like to use for my slings and how i feed them so i would definitely check that out but mainly what i use is pinhead crickets cut up mealworms uh flightless fruit flies and confused flower beetles it just kind of depends on the species and the size let's see you got another stella mage said 
there was a lot of copycats on TikTok copying her, putting her tea in her mouth. Horrible. Oh, I think that's a response to something else I didn't see. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think it's a good idea uh, to put a tarantula. In fact, I know it's a, it's a terrible idea to put a tarantula in your mouth. Koi Wood says, don't know if this is allowed, but have you ever looked into Ants Canada? I feel his videos can be quite fun and relaxing to watch or even just listen and seeing ants. Yeah, I've, I've actually watched a lot of Ants Canada's videos. He even left a comment on one of my videos um, when I was talking about the tarantula hobbies changing. Uh, he seems like a, a nice guy. He's got great quality videos. Um, I just, I enjoy watching them, but I, you know, I, I got into keeping tarantulas because I was scared of spiders. So it was like kind of exposure therapy helped me kind of get over my fear of spiders. Uh, but I think there's there's something about ants that still just creep me way out. And I don't think it's, it's not just one ant. It's, it's the whole colony of ants, how they kind of work together. Uh, that, that freaks me out. It's not something I really want to have in my house. Like, I mean, growing up, I was like, uh, if I got ants in my house or my apartment, it was always really bad. They're getting the peanut butter. They're getting the food. It was just, I hated them. I hated dealing with them. So I have a hard time thinking that it would be fun to intentionally bring them into my house, especially since they seem to be able to escape pretty easily. Uh, let's see. Oh, we got another super chat. So thank you so much. For super chat. Secret Forest Creatures UK, thank you for the four ninety nine. Or let me just say five pounds. Uh, are you excited to judge all our clips for Fatal Fangs three? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm. I'm kind of. I love feeding videos, so I'm really looking forward to watching some tarantula feeding videos and seeing what you guys all came up with. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, which is going to be over on uh, Pet Rock and Rolls channel. So you know, if, if you're not familiar with what Fatal Fangs is, it's a, a a tarantula youtuber feeding competition they get a bunch of different tarantula youtubers together they submit their best feeding clips and they go head to head bracket style uh kind of championship and uh there'll be three of us judges will be judging them and picking the winner out of each uh head to head battle and they'll move on to the second round the third round all the way down to the finals and uh it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun so yeah if you haven't uh if you just haven't heard about that or don't know what it is go over to pet rock and rolls channel uh amy has all kinds of uh, information there and we shall start posting the competitions i believe really soon i think it's it's about ready to kick off here in the next week or so i know everybody's got all their feeding clips in so so we got another question this one's from jonathan mulligan says what do you think about purse web spiders you know i'll be honest with you jonathan i don't uh, i don't think i know much about them let me look it up real quick purse web spider purse web spider of kentucky is the first thing that comes up um Whoa, those look, they look like trapdoor spiders. Those look very cool. I don't, I'll be honest with you. I don't know a whole lot about them. Um, you know, I'm just starting to get into like the, uh, the trapdoors, more of the true spiders, but those look amazing. They look very similar to, uh, some of the trapdoor spiders pictures that I've taken. I mean, I love those huge fangs. Those are, those are awesome. A good question. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tracy says, any suggestions for buying tea habitats online? Well, I, obviously I'm a uh, first thing I'll say is uh, check out tarantula cribs. Uh, but that's because they like sponsor everything I do. Uh, TarantulaCribs.com. If you use the code TCollective10, you get 10% off your purchase. They've got great acrylic enclosures. Uh, but other than that, buying tea habitats online, there uh, there are some other ones out there that are that are pretty good. I got, I got them listed on my website. Just go to the TarantulaCollective.com, and uh, it's under the supplies section. Uh, you can see some of them. I'd be careful buying some of them off of Wish and off Amazon. I was actually going to do a video on that. I bought some off Wish and Amazon and uh, kind of did a review and they were some, some of them were just terrible. Like they were horrible. They were much smaller than they looked on their ad and they didn't go together very well. They have all kinds of problems, but I got worried. Like I, I never put the video out like, uh, because I was like, I feel like this is just an advertisement for people to go and buy them because they were, they were pretty cheap. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, but looks like we got another super chat here. Super chat. That's not a new super chat. That's the same one I just did. <laughs> you, got, you got a double there, there Secret Force. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else we got? Oh, we got another question. I'm hoping to get a GBB Mexican fire leg and an iridescent blue when the temps get high enough for them to ship. Can you talk a little bit about them? All right, Brian. Well, uh, I can say that probably my favorite tarantula out there is the green bottle blue. I love that tea. Uh, the Mexican fire leg is all, I mean, those are both really good tarantulas that I've, uh, I've put videos out on like multiple videos on them talking about how I care for them, uh, what type of enclosures I use at what different sizes, 
and you know, how I feed them. So I mean, all that information I, I put out there. So you can definitely check those out. I'm actually going to be doing uh, redoing my video on the GBB here in the next month or two, uh, just because I got a lot better footage of it and uh, I'm going to change it up a little bit. The iridescent blue. I'm not familiar with that common name, so let me look that up real quick. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Teratopelma sesame. Sesame. I actually have a video on that one as well. So yeah, all three of those species that you're looking for, I've got like full uh, Karen husbandry videos on. It gives you all my uh, opinions and uh, knowledge and experience and, and footage of them. Um, and those are all, those are three really awesome tarantulas. The, the iridescent blue is, um, a little disappointing. I think like when I get the right lighting and stuff like that, that blue and red really pops, but most of the time it just kind of looks like this dull brownish, or not brown, but blackish gray tarantula. And, uh, I don't know about other people's specimens, but, but mine spends a lot of time hidden in its burrow. I, I rarely see it. The larger it gets, the more I've, I've seen it out and about, but for a long time, I, I didn't really see them very much at all. Let's see what else we got here. Tarantula Finn says, your videos were, were the reason I started to get interested in teas. Last summer, I was watching your videos and decided to get one, and now I have 24. Oh, man, that's, that's uh, definitely that's something that happens quite a bit. <laughs> what do you use to hide? How's your isopods in? Uh, the young naturalist. I use uh, these uh, acrylic display cases that I get from uh, the hobby shop. They're like, uh, I think they're called from Pioneer Plastics um just drill a whole bunch of ventilation holes in them and so far those have been working really well uh i i think that i've shown them in, in some of my isopod videos but hopefully i'll be able to uh, get together an isopod video um you know in the near future uh, it's not like on my list for this month or anything but uh, i work i'm planning on doing that uh, but if you watch any of my isopod videos i at least show you the enclosure i probably i know i haven't done like a husbandry video on them yet uh, just because I don't, I don't feel like i'm i'm there but uh, but yeah, that's what I use. They're just essentially about the size of a shoebox. I mean, they're they're larger than a shoebox. We have like pretty big shoes, but just big acrylic enclosures. All right, let's see what else we've got. This is uh, Wagas Moore says how to know if my scorpion giant centipede is hungry. Uh, that's that's a tough one. Um, it's not really tough. I mean, I, what I go by is I, I watch how they're acting, like their behavior. If they're usually, you know, hiding and now they're out wandering their enclosure a whole lot, to me, that's like the first sign that they're probably looking for food. Um, but then I also look at like their abdomen size. Um, if they're like really fat, then, then I don't feed them. Uh, but, you know, you, you can kind of see uh, just how plump they are. So, you know, if they're extremely plump, then I'll, I'll skip feeding them. Uh, but I try to get on a schedule. Like every two weeks, I will, uh, I, I will consider feeding my scorpions especially my full adult grown ones uh but you know it, it, usually they, they don't eat all that much like my fin green maybe eats once a month my uh a tail of swift scorpion probably every other month uh and you know so scorpions are, are are similar in a lot of ways uh to, to like that, that type of feeding schedule and so i, I try not to overfeed them because they can get they can get really fat but let's see rocky mountain spider freak says we repaired yesterday for ff3 richard uh who was paired yesterday not me. Minette asks, how many eggs does a tarantula lay? And it's a great question, and that would depend 100% on what species it is. I know that uh, some species, and I don't know the exact number because I'm not a breeder, but I know like the, uh, the T. celadonia does not have very many eggs. I think um, I, well, I talked about this, I believe, with uh, Dustin on one of the podcasts. Uh, it was Tarantula Dealer Secrets. And if I'm right, I think he said there's, I mean, there's less than 50. It may even be fewer than that. But then you've got like LPs, like Glossiodora periabanas and some of those other um, new world terrestrials that can have a thousand or more eggs uh, in one sack. So it, it really just kind of depends on the species there. Uh, looks like we've got a new super chat from Crystal. Thank you so much, Crystal. Super chat. Really appreciate that $10. That helps support the channel quite a bit a bit so thank you uh she, her question is we're getting our first tea for my guys 13 year old and he decided on a three inch arizona blonde female any advice for us i was hoping to get a sling uh but he's a bit impatient thanks for all you do you know, i think getting a, a juvenile or you know a, well she's 13 year old so she's a wait no that the kid's 13 year old 
So it's a three inch Arizona blonde. Yeah. I think that's, that's a good size to get an Arizona blonde because you'll still be able to see it grow. Uh, and, and it, but it will also already kind of have its adult colorations and, and be large enough to, to at least handle a little bit if you really needed to. Um, but any tips, any advice for us? Um, be patient. You know, I, I have a video on, uh, the fauna pelma calcodes. If you want to know like how I take care of mine and how I feed it and all that kind of stuff, I would suggest checking out that video. Um, but anything beyond that, I, patience with that species is probably the, the, the most important thing. Cause they just, they're so slow to grow and they don't move around a whole lot. They're kind of like a, just a, a very relaxed, chilled spider. So I, mean, I think it's a great species to get, especially if you're getting it for a kid. Uh, they're beautiful. Uh, they're amazing. I would, uh, you know, just make sure you, they're, they're, they're an aired species. You know, they, they, I keep mine at least, uh, in an aired enclosure. Try not to overdo it with um, damp substrate or anything like that. That probably could cause some problems. Um, make sure they have a water dish. Overfill the water dish and let it dry out and overfill it again. So, yeah, beyond that, I, I would say it's it's a pretty, uh, if there's such a thing as a plug-and-play tarantula, that's definitely would be one of them. <laughs> All right, scroll back up. What we got here? Oh, we got a Arachnoboss scent a super sticker. Thank you so much for that. Super. <laughs> Didn't mean to miss you there, Arachno Boss. Um, Steven says, how did you get on with breeding on the Mexican red rump? Uh, how did you get on? I'm not sure what you mean. How, uh, it, it went well. The first pairing went really well, and the second pairing did not go well. But she hasn't dropped an egg sac yet, but she is very fat and a lot more docile than she was uh, for the past three or four years. So. Hopefully that means that she's uh, she's been impregnated or will be fertilizing some eggs soon. Well, we'll see how it goes. The tarantula fins says, "How much you paid for your cameras you use to film tarantulas?" Oh man, that's um, <clears throat> that's a tough one. Um, a lot. Uh, like I, not all at once. I've been like slowly investing over years uh, in camera equipment. If if you want to know exactly what cameras I use and stuff like that, I'm going to be putting a video out uh, here in the near future on that um it's gonna be like a, one of my friday uploads kind of just breaking down just the different camera equipment and lights and stuff like that i use uh but you can also uh, in the description of all my videos there's a, a link to my amazon storefront if you click that link um there's like different lists some of them are for enclosures and husbandry some's for like tarantula style clothing and uh like t-shirts and hats with tarantulas on them and then there's one that's just on camera equipment and in that list you can i mean it's pretty much everything that i use is on there uh, or things that I want to use. And you, so you can see the prices there, but um, like the camera I'm using right now, uh, Lumix G, uh, GH, GH5S, uh, I believe when I got it, it was retailing like around $1,200. Uh, and lenses can be anywhere from like 100 to 1,000 bucks. So, I mean, it can get expensive. Uh, but if you shop around, get, I mean, buy used off eBay, that's a great way to find uh, good stuff or get, uh, what's that let go app or something like that something else now offer up i think that's what it's called now you can find used cameras out there that people are wanting to upgrade and the majority of photographers are out there uh take really good care of their cameras so you know they want a, a new version of their camera comes out they want to upgrade the body they'll they'll sell their old one um usually uh it, it'll usually be in pretty good shape so you know buy used especially with camera equipment and you know save a whole lot of money all right, so we answered crystals. That was tarantula fin. Oh, I see what Rocky Mountain Spider Freaks was saying. We were paired uh, for the final Fatal Fangs 3 contestants yesterday on Amy's stream. Not you, but the rest of us. Okay, I gotcha. Now it makes sense. Oh, excuse me. I had to take a drink. Oh, we got a good question from Black Dragon. It says, is it normal for a tea sling to not eat about a month? Uh, again, I think that's going to depend on the species of the tarantula. A lot of your new world terrestrials, that's totally like, um, Chilocotyl vogans or, um, Abipelosum, uh, pretty much any of your fauna pelma or brocky pelma species, uh, this would also be true for, so th especially if they're living like 20 or 30 years, they can go months. Like I, I got a, a fauna pelma calcodes spiderling that went, you know, six, eight months before, without eating, just burrowed down and was in pre-mold it was fat and it was just waiting for it to mold once it molted about a week later it finally came out of its burrow and it took a cricket but yeah i, I would say that's that's uh that's, especially if they look like they're in pre-mold they got a very plump shiny abdomen then uh yeah i'd say that's uh that's totally fine 
is not out of the normal at least uh but yeah as just like the comment right below yours said from uh IRD, keep an eye on the abdomen size yeah if it's if their abdomen's thin if it's a thin looking or at least it's not like really plump then maybe be worried uh, um and one thing you can do I, I mentioned this a lot in my videos is offer it prey um if it doesn't eat it within an hour or two take it out try again in a week or two all right what else we got here oh here we go this is from james says uh would you recommend a choco goldeny or a brazilian black oh man that's that's tough oh man uh what would uh i, I think this is this is a hard one and and ironically my choco goldeny and my brazilian black are like next to each other on a shelf all alone because you know, they're two of my like favorite tarantulas to kind of have out on display um man that's i i think i would go i think i would go with a choco goldeny now ask me tomorrow it may be a different story but uh today i think that's that's what i would say is go with the choco goldeny um they're they're a cool tarantula i, I love the their their feeding response i mean the brazilian black's amazing too but I, there's just something about the choco goldeny that it kind of has that uh I don't know. I just like it's, it's the pattern of its colors a lot. I just think it's pretty cool. All right. What other, what else? Questions? What other questions you got? Oh, here's one. Do you have dart frogs? Nope. I do not. I wish I did one day in the future, maybe. Uh, but right now I do not. That's why I, I had a podcast with Amphibicast. We did a podcast together a few weeks ago. We talked all about dart frogs because I like know nothing about them, but I'm fascinated by them. So uh, it was really cool to kind of pick his brain and get some information on there. So if, if you're looking for information on dart frogs, definitely check that out. It's on my second channel, the Exotic Pet Collective. And I, I mean, it'd be pretty easy to find it because I think the thumbnail is just pictures of dart frogs. <laughs> so uh, we talked for a few hours about them. Here we got one from Infinity Free Run. What size of enclosures do you use compared to your tarantula size? eyes uh that's a kind of a rule of thumb i try to go three to four times the leg span of the tarantula so if it's like a two inch tarantula i'll try to do an enclosure uh that's like six inches if that makes any sense uh, with arboreals i usually try to go four to five times the leg span in length or in height i guess would be a, a good a better way of saying that so they have plenty of room to crawl up and down uh you can go larger than that but i wouldn't go any smaller than that uh, but you know just like i was talking about earlier it's all about kind of moderation and balance like you can go larger than that, but you don't want to go too large. I mean, you put a spiraling in a like in a, a an adult size enclosure, uh, you, you run some pro you into some problems there. Um, namely, that the tarantula could possibly squeeze out of the ventilation holes that would be required for good ventilation in, a, in an adult tarantula enclosure. Uh, so you don't want to do that. I know, like some, especially some of these exoterras, the the doors have gaps in them which there's no way an adult ranch could sneak out of, but there is a possibility a sling might be able to squeeze through there. Uh, you know, so and that, and then there's the, the issue with feeding, like when in a huge enclosure is housing a very small tarantula, it's kind of hard to figure out where that spiderling or even juvenile is. Uh, you drop prey in there. Uh, the prey may end up dying on one side of the enclosure before the tarantula on the other side even notices it's there and has a chance to eat it. So, you know, I, I try not to go too large with the enclosures. All right. Looking for more questions. Uh, it says it's uh it's three fifty one in the morning here in the Philippines. That is ridiculously late. You need to go to bed. <laughs> Just go to bed. Watch the the replay tomorrow. <laughs> oh, here's a good comment. Uh, Kyle says your tarantulas definitely teach patience. That is very true. If you're not a patient person and you get into the tarantulas, you're going to learn some patience very quick. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, from. Another question here from Luby's Planet. I believe this one that says, can you recommend a good beginner tea that doesn't live 20 to 30 years, that a lifespan is a bit intimidating? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not intimidating if you don't think about it. I think sometimes uh, I'll look at my collection and be like, you know, some of these tarantulas might outlive me. And that's a little concerning. <laughs> like, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say uh, any avicularia tarantula, Carabina versicolors. Um, you know, I think they they've all got a lifespan around 12, 15 years or so. I think that'd be a good one. Or any dwarf tarantula, like those dwarf tarantulas have a smaller lifespan. So like, um, well, Hapalopa, Hapalopa species, Columbia, like the pumpkin patch tarantula is a good one. I love Syracosmus species, like your Bolivian blue dwarf beauties. Um, 
or uh, the Trinidad. Wait, that's not it. What is it? The uh, oh, I can't remember their common names, but the Syracosmus Elegans, like a lot of those are really cool uh, dwarf tarantulas, and, and you know, they're only going to live like 10 15 years at most. All right, scrolling down. Boom, here's a question from uh, Chloe Woods again. Have you gotten any teas or true spiders you're looking into getting? Uh, I've got true spiders. I mean, I got some trapdoor spiders. I think those are true. Those might not be true spiders. Um, I think all my true spiders have passed away because they don't live very long. That's like the, the downside to a lot of true spiders. They've got like a lifespan of maybe a year or two. Uh, I did have a green link spider for a while. I had a black widow for a while. Those are really cool to have. Um, I've got like a curtain web spider. Uh, funnel web spider some trapdoor spiders uh but yeah that's that's all i've got and uh I, i've been posting some videos of my uh, curtain web spider mainly i mean i did a video on my youtube channel about it like rehousing it but then i took some other videos uh people were asking for like time lapses of it kind of webbing up that enclosure and i tried that for like five days i was putting the gopro up and kind of recording it making its web but um it just it wasn't doing much so i i was like all right i'm just wasting time and <laughs> like uh I would record like the entire night. So it'd be like 10 hours of recording and time lapse. I'd watch it the next day. And I might see the tarantula like go around or the, the spider go around the enclosure laying webs like once. So I was like, it would end up being like two seconds of footage. I was like, that's, this is not worth it. So I stopped recording and then now it's like covered its entire enclosure <laughs> with webbing pretty quickly. Uh, but I did get some footage of it doing that and posted it on my TikTok. Uh, so if you want to see some like extra videos that uh, maybe don't make the, um, the youtube channel you know just follow me on tiktok or on twitter or something like that instagram i'll post those videos up there just kind of like the short little videos all right red house with another question would you go on vacation to find wild tarantulas if so where would you go um actually for our honeymoon i my wife and i went to sedona arizona um mainly because we really wanted to visit the southwest we really wanted to check out you know sedona but also i wanted to uh, go somewhere where there were some tarantulas so we were hiking checking you know doing the majority of the time we spent in sedona was hiking and uh never never found a tarantula even though i was looking i found some burrows um but it was for, like we actually went out into the canyons with a guide looking at some ruins and stuff and uh there there were they were he was on a walkie talking to you know other uh tour guides you know over the radio we were there kind of at the end of the day we we're like the last guy like tour group he was taken out there in his jeep and uh they were talking about you know be careful when you go up this path we saw some tarantulas up there and i was like yes this is awesome finally gonna find one you know looked everywhere could i didn't see any tarantulas uh we'd be walking around you know uh where we were staying going to like the restaurant and stuff like that and we'd hear people walking down the street talking about how they just saw a tarantula over there and this hotel parking lot or you know over here by this this store and i was like all right let's go check it out and we'd go where they were just saying they saw tarantulas and we didn't see any so uh, fortunately, that did not work. Uh, but I do have some plans here in the uh, summer, possibly. This is all just dependent on what goes on in the world as far as COVID and everything. But I've talked to uh, Wilderness Nate from um, Micro Wilderness. He lives out in California, and he goes out and, and studies some tarantulas in the wild and uh, works something out with him. So hopefully this summer, late summer, early fall, something like that, I'll be able to go visit him. And he'll take me out, show me some tarantula burrows and places that they find tarantulas. Uh, and then I'm also tentatively very possibly going to um what was it sky mountain in arizona with uh tanya from fear not tarantulas um they're going to go out there and look for tarantulas and centipedes and scorpions and stuff like that and i'm going to go out there with them and uh film it so i think that'd be really cool oh looks like we got another super chat here very cool thank you so much all right we're Rick Crony says, uh, sent $5 Canadian. So thank you so much for that. Uh, since I can only get one of these species where I live, what should I get? A Bihamori, G. Rosea, or a Vicularia Vicularia? I may in time get all three. Oh, man. Uh, uh, I would say I would go with the, if it was me, I would go with the, the Homori first. I mean, the, the Rosea is amazing and the Avic is amazing. Uh, Avic, depending on your husbandry and, you know, uh, you're just your your experience i guess uh, i find them very easy to take care of um but you know there there has been a lot of people that have had issues with avicularias usually i think it's because uh they're just they're keeping it in, in an enclosure that's too stagnant uh with too much humidity but yeah i, I, don't, I don't know 
the homori or the avicularia I, I guess it depends on what type of enclosure you want to set up but you know my, my homories are out on display almost all the time uh avicularias once they get larger they're out on display a lot when they're smaller not so much so if, if you're getting spiderlings uh i would i think i would go with the b homori first personally um, but again that's those are that's a tough question <laughs> All right, let's see. I think I missed a whole bunch of questions up here. Let me scroll up for a second. Uh, answered Chloe's. Mm -mm. What the? I was just seeing if we had any moderators in here, but it looks like JoJo's Exo Cavern is a moderator. Well see anybody else in here that's a moderator do i just doing a little bit of housekeeping real quick arthropod ambassadors i don't know if she's still in here maybe you can help me out in the chat a little bit add you as a moderator and rocky mountain spider freaks i know you were a moderator at one point are you still yeah you're still a moderator. all right so we got a few of them in here all right let's get back If as Wiseman says, uh, almost missed the live session, just came from work to see her live. Good evening. Uh, good evening to you as well. Uh, that's very cool. All right. <laughs> here's, a, here's a question from James. Top softball question. Top three favorite genus. Oh, and that's, that's tough. Uh, it, it feels like a softball question. I, I would have to say Gramistola and then but, uh, Pamphibetus. And then I got to look around. Harpectera. I like that genus a lot too. All right. We got another question from uh, Michael Afton. It says, uh, depending on the tarantula and which tarantula, will they take pre-killed prey? Um, I have never seen any of my adult tarantulas take pre-killed prey, but my spiderlings do it all the time. And juveniles, it's kind of uh, up in the air. Uh, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, I think it just depends on how you drop it in the enclosure maybe like sometimes if i if it's pre-killed and i drop it and like rolls on the web a little bit like kind of rolls down a little bit of a slope uh they sense that as movement and will attack on it uh, adults though I, I i have not had much luck all right okay yeah we already answered that one there's another question from kyle it says how are the rubber duckies doing they're actually doing really well um you can't see them they're off camera over here but on a little table that i use to shoot all my videos i've got both the rubber ducky and the blonde rubber ducky enclosures there uh and and actually have the lids cracked on them because uh i i felt like i know they need to be kept in a slightly humid environment they do like some moisture in their enclosure and i i don't know i think it was too much like i was seeing some condensation on the sides and uh i didn't want it to be too stagnant so i pulled them off the shelf and uh, put in some additional ventilation holes and i'm kind of leaving the lids off for a little bit of a time to help some of that uh just kind of evaporate and I get some of the moisture out of there so i can I, I talked to russ about it he was doing a live stream a while ago or yesterday maybe or the day before um and i, I asked him i was like I, I think that you know my setup's a little too damp is that paul is that could that be a problem he was like it could be uh, and he suggested I do the moisture gradient, which is kind of how he suggested most of the species I keep. Uh, and which is one side, we got like moss and stuff like that on and kind of keep that damp. And then on the complete other side, I uh, leave that pretty dry. So it's, uh, you know, they can kind of go back and forth based on whatever their moisture needs are at the moment. So uh, that's, that's kind of how I'm doing it right now. All right. Michael says, thanks for the answer. Yeah, you know, cold blooded says any plans to get more reptiles? If so, which one? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, I've got the ball python, the uh, eastern king snake, the California king snake, uh, the leopard geckos, the day geckos, uh, the milk snake. That's it right now, I believe. Um, and hopefully in the near future, uh, one actually, it's a, um, uh, I think it's a, one of my Patreon supporters, Frank and Herper, um, had watched the video I did with uh, Adams or from, yeah, Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. And, he had uh I, I had mentioned let me let me back up 
Adam from Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles said, a crested gecko would be a great reptile for tarantula keepers. I express some desire like that. If I was going to get another reptile, that would be the one I would want to get uh, maybe one day. And Frankenherper breeds them and sells them and was like, I've got plenty. I'll send you one. So <laughs> once the temperatures warm up, hopefully I'll be getting a crested gecko. And uh, yeah, that would be really cool. Arthur Prime Ambassador says, I feel like I just got knighted. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you helping out. I know the, the chat can get a little crazy. There's, I don't even know, there's like 80 people watching right now or something like that. I'm not even sure. Uh, I always try to mix it up. Like sometimes I'll go live on the weekends, sometimes a weekday, sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes at night, just trying to figure out, not so much figure out when people are the most available, but, um, you know, some people in England, are, you know, if I'm streaming at 10 o'clock at night, they're in bed, they're sleeping. So, you know, I try to mix it up so, you know, people can have can join the live stream at, at, you know, depending on their schedules. All right. What else we've got scrolling up, looking for questions. And Jojo XO cavern, you guys uh, don't pick on Jojo. She'll come after you. That's uh, that's, that's one tough lady right there. She's one of my favorites. Oh, we got another one. Uh, what all precautions should I take when my sling is molting or is going to molt? Um, leave it alone. Like, I think that's the biggest uh, tip I can give anybody who's dealing with a tarantula that's molting. Uh, we, there, there seems to be this, like, especially with uh, people newer to the hobby, there's, like, fear that a molt is, like, some very traumatic, horrible thing that's going to be happening that they should be stressed out about. And the reality is, I mean, tarantulas molt. That's what they do. Like, they're they're built for that. So. The, I think the most detrimental thing we can do as keepers is to disturb a tarantula while it's molting. Like, uh, I think that's where a lot of people have problems. Like why, when there's bad molts, uh, one, it could just be husbandry. They were, you know, the enclosure was too dry and it was a moisture dependent species or something like that. But also I think a lot of times it's, uh, people are watching or worried and, and they're moving the enclosure and taking the lid off and, you know, trying to look at it and, and poke it and, and stuff like that. So if you're, if your tarantula is molting, you know, once it starts, once it flips over on its back, now it's time to leave it alone. Don't touch the enclosure. Don't try to feed it. Don't try to give it water. Uh, just don't bother it at all. And, you know, I've, I've had issues in the past where a trench will flip over like it's going to molt, but then it never molts. It just lays there for hours. Uh, in those situations, what I do, if I've got any kind of lights on, like my LED lights or something like that, I will turn the, off that light to its enclosure. Um, and if that doesn't kind of help, then I'll sometimes even just take a towel or like a small blanket or something and put it over its enclosure. Uh, that way it's not seeing really any movement and um and that, that kind of makes it feel a lot more safer maybe it's uh it, it makes it easier for it to molt that's all anecdotal though i don't there's no scientific uh reasoning behind any of that it's just uh something that i do that seems to work I manette says what is your most painful experience with any tarantula i don't know i feel like i answered that one but maybe not um um, oh, I guess it's a little bit different question. Um, my most painful would be, it was either my Brachypelma baby or the Theraphosa uh, Sturmy, but I, it kicked some urticating hairs at me or was it, I don't even think it kicked it. I think, I think it was the Sturmy and I was rehousing it and I was like scooping the old substrate out of its enclosure to throw away and forgot to put on gloves and the hairs that it kicked off onto the surface of its uh, enclosure, like on the substrate got in between my fingers and it itched and burned and blistered and it was just welts and it was it was terrible so <laughs> that was extremely painful and uncomfortable and it teaches you a lesson real fast to wear gloves especially when you're dealing with those um those types of tarantulas and jojo says oh richard that's that's legit the nicest thing you've ever said oh well i'm sorry if i make you feel bad jojo you're an awesome person uh Yves says pretty good time to stream now it's 9 p.m here in switzerland <laughs> oh wow that's wild it's uh it's four o'clock here uh will you do more care will you do will you do care guides on more inverts yeah yeah i'm planning on it um it, it's doing youtube videos is is difficult because you know it mainly was doing like every week a new species specific care guide and people stopped watching so it was like I didn't get 5,000 views on the video and then a different species the next week. Now I'm going to get 4,000 views and then 3,000 views and then like a thousand views. So I was like, well, I got to switch it up. So I started doing top 10 videos. 
kind of break up the monotony a little bit. People seem to really respond to those. Uh, and then they're asking for feeding videos and unboxing videos and stuff like that. So I, tr I try to do a little bit of everything. Uh, and at, I'm hoping to do at least one to two care videos um, every month, at least maybe more now that I'm, I'm doing two videos a week. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely trying to break it up a little bit so everybody can get whatever type of content it is they like, you know, and have at least some kind of new video in that genre or niche, uh, at least once a month. Um, but I do have other inverts that I'm going to be doing a Karen husbandry video on the striped tailed scorpion on the Arizona bark scorpion, um, on the curtain web spider, not curtain web, funnel web spider, the L megalo or whatever that species is. Uh, there's, uh, I've got it. I mean, I've got like a hundred scorpions down here, so I'm planning on doing a lot more, on, uh, videos on the scorpions. And then after a while, also starting to do some videos on isopods. So yeah, there'll be a bunch of different inverts that will be coming up here in the near future. All right. Well, we got other questions here. Rick just says dogs. <laughs> I don't know what that was in reference to. Irie says, I switched YouTube to Patreon. Now I'm missing that pretty badge next to my name. Yeah, that's that's the frustrating part. I mean, got like the Patreon membership, um, which, you know, you, it's essentially the same as the YouTube membership, but with Patreon, you get like a, essentially a little magnet in the mail and, and stuff like that. But if you do it on YouTube, then you get a little badge in the chat. <laughs> so it's, yeah, you one or the other, I guess. All right. I don't, to, I don't know what's going on here. Let me scroll back up. I feel like I'm skipping a lot. I'll give you guys a second to, to drop in some more questions or if, if you had any more. Um, put that up there. But yeah, um, actually, while, while we're waiting, you guys want to see a little sneak peek um arn arn says have you ever been bitten by a tarantula and that is probably the most asked question and uh no i have never been bitten by a tarantula i mean i got my first tarantula in 2000 and at no point i mean i've had a few close calls i was doing something stupid but i, I didn't get that's actually something i was uh talking on the podcast with uh coyote peterson oh Irie, Irie's back as a youtube channel member <laughs> You can't stay. Channel oh, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining as a new member. That's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? So I, I was just talking to Cody Peterson and I pretty much was like, we're on two opposite sides of the spectrum, buddy. Like you're going out into the wilderness and you're capturing these uh, spider snakes and scorpions and um getting them to intentionally bite you and making videos about it and i am here in my basement in the foothills of appalachians and i am showing people how to care for these in captivity without getting bitten <laughs> it's like so yeah we're we're, we're, we're complete opposites <laughs> so that was uh that was kind of funny uh but yeah never been bit i guess is the, the short answer to that never been bit never been stung uh the only thing that's ever bitten me to be honest is uh my uh, ball python it got me right on the finger once which was uh didn't really hurt that bad because he's he's still a small guy and it was uh my fault like uh, i wasn't paying attention to what i was doing i thought he was in the bottom right hand side of the enclosure uh, in his hide and he was in the top left hand right hand side whatever the opposite side of the enclosure like up on top of this like cork bark kind of hanging out in the tree so when i came in with the tongs and a little mouse on the end of it i pretty much just brought it right by its mouth and then kept moving down so he just smelled it, saw the, the the movement or whatever, and he went to strike. But by the time he went to strike at it, I'd already moved it out of his way and put my hand right in, you know, right in front of his, you know, open mouth. So he latched onto the side of my finger. So I can't even blame him for that. That was that was all me. All right, what else we got? Uh, do you do you get help? Oh, I was just reading that one. Do you get help with cleaning and dusting of enclosures? I do not. Nobody helps me. It's just me. Um, I did have somebody send me an email uh, a few weeks ago uh, offering to uh, like be an intern or something like that and coming and, and helping me clean and, and stuff like it. It was very tempting, um, but I just haven't responded to him yet just because uh, with just with everything with COVID and trying to keep our family safe, just uh, 
we spend we hang out here at the house all the time and, and kind of hide out <laughs> and we're also just not very social people at least i'm not so i'm like having somebody come to the house is um not on the top of my list right now but, but hopefully one day i'll i will um get somebody to come help me you know not even i mean I, it it seems i don't even know how to say it the reason that i make youtube videos and the reason i keep tarantulas and scorpions is because i like doing that stuff you know i like feeding them and i like interacting with them and rehousing them and stuff so paying somebody to come in and do the parts of the hobby that i enjoy doing is like eh, i don't know if that's a good idea or not i don't want to get too far away from their care uh, but you know at some point it may i may need to do that um maybe just have somebody come into water them or clean the poop off the glass of my arboreals every now and then uh, help me shoot videos i think that would be cool to have somebody like to work with i think it would be awesome but see what happens nowhere near that point yet still can need to do this all by myself uh let's see uh, ashley says how do you choose a new tarantula for your collection um well that's tough uh usually it's not just one I, if i'm going to buy one tarantula especially online then you know i try to save up so i'm getting at least like four or five tarantulas uh but really i just kind of go off of what's available you know and i will search around different websites see um what people have and not just what i'm not just looking for one tarantula like you know i'll, I'll have like a list of uh, like five or ten species i would like to add to my collection and then i'll go to all these different websites and online dealers and see who has the most of those uh, on that list available and the, you know do a little bit of price shopping comparison and Try to just order from one dealer you know i don't like splitting my order over like three different dealers because then you're paying like 150 dollars in shipping total so you know i try to just order from one place and usually select that off of who's got the best prices the best reputation and, and the as many of the species i'm looking for as possible all right let's see 35 rake says i'll try again do you have, have macrothelli species i do not i don't have any of those species sorry let's see what else we got all right we go jonathan mulligan says what do you think about ephobus moranus i think it's a, a pretty cool tarantula i believe that i have one in my collection but it's uh it's a spiraling so let me let me just make sure I'm not lying skeleton tarantula i am lying i do not have that tarantula um and i don't know why I think it's because it's so from it looks very similar to me. Um, like I've got a couple of different Afon and Pelmas Samanis. I know they're different tarantulas and they there are some definite visual differences, but uh I've and, and in fact years ago I ordered that tarantula twice. Uh once from Jamie's tarantulas and once from another business that well, I'm not gonna say their name, but they're no longer in business anymore. Uh it's just gonna burn me. Um and, and I ordered them and it was one of those things like you, you place the order, you pay for it. They say it's going to ship next week. And then like the day before it's supposed to ship, they send you a message or call you and like, although that species we don't have in stock anymore. Uh, you need to pick something else. <laughs> it's like, man. So like after not being able to get it a couple of times, uh, it just, it just never really got back on my list of tarantulas I'd like to add um, for whatever reason. And it also, I, I don't know. It's, it just seems like it's, um, it just spends a lot of time hidden so I, don't, I just don't have much experience with that species i'm sorry uh maybe one day i'll add one to my collection james have you thought of writing a book actually yes i'm in the process of writing a book and i haven't really told anybody i've told a few people but it's not like public knowledge but uh yeah i'm working on uh writing a uh, kind of like a care and husbandry book um also more of an effort, i don't know i'm not gonna go into too much detail but yes <laughs> i'm working on something like that jojo says i really want an emeranus yeah yeah it's a, it's a it's a pretty looking tarantula that's for sure Arn says how do you find the latin name for a tarantula um it's pretty easy if you just google it if you know the common name and you google it most of the time the the, the scientific name the latin name it's not always latin like so, i mean there's many different languages uh but the scientific name will usually show up most reputable dealers only sell tarantulas based off their scientific names um but yeah other than that the google and it you know there, there are plenty of books out there like a spider identification catalog and stuff like that that you can also find that information anthony says do you got c darlingy oh, i do have a few of them i made a couple of videos on them as well or at least one 
uh harry says what would you say is your favorite species of tarantula and why um i mean my basic go-to answer is green bottle blue tarantula because they're extremely colorful and uh very voracious feeders and uh, they web a whole lot so I, I like spider webs um and they're they do a little bit of burrowing and they also like having a little uh kind of arboreal space so you can keep them what i say semi-arboreally all the time and then i get a lot of people get really upset because they're like that semi-arboreal is not a thing it's either basaurial terrestrial or arboreal and i had one guy very angry sent me a message like quit saying gbb is uh semi-arboreal because we got people in the hobby now that are keeping their gbbs arboreally and i'm like well I, i'm you how is that my fault <laughs> like i'm obviously saying semi-arboreally and i'm explaining what that is so if somebody chooses to put theirs in an arboreal enclosure saying that i said that it that it could be kept arboreally like well obviously they didn't watch the video or listen very well because i never said they could keep it arboreally but semi-arboreal is like filling an enclosure you know uh, a third or halfway with substrate and putting you know just two kind of different little branches and stuff above the surface of the substrate so they can web it up uh showed plenty of examples of how i keep my obt and uh, my gbb um and and yeah i keep them semi-arboreally because they, they web up a whole lot make really cool web tunnels on the surface but they also burrow down and make kind of burrows down there so that's why i like the gbb it's like the best of all different aspects of tarantulas in one there's one why aren't more tarantulas capable of living communally like balfouris have experiments been done with trying to have other species growing up from slings um i don't know if there's like been scientific like scientists doing experiments but i i would say that there are a lot of keepers i mean for 30 years probably that have experimented with keeping uh tarantulas in a communal setup from slings uh i mean i think part of it is just tarantula territorial just the the genetics and and you know like how they've evolved over millions of years is you know, kind of have their own little territory and anything that moves that is you know perceived as prey gets eaten so like anything they're same size or smaller so it it, it, it would be hard to you know keep the tarantulas communally there there have like monas and trophies about 40 that have been success with uh some people have been keeping uh postletheria metallicus communally or um uh, there's some, a few other different postletheria species there's been some people keeping neothelia nc communally uh i mean when i first started keeping tarantulas people were keeping or talking about keeping avicularia species communally but i mean nine times out of ten the majority of those attempts end up with tarantulas getting eaten um so it's it's hard hard to do that and it's risky i mean i mean you get a tarantula that's like 50 dollars a piece and you put a, you know 300 dollars of the tarantulas in an enclosure you turn your back for a couple of days you end up having like two tarantulas left it's like oh man that was a it was a waste of money and a waste of life like it's you know it's not something you really wanted to to risk um i, I wish more tarantulas could be kept communally i think that would be awesome but I just i just don't think it's uh i don't think they've evolved to have that need so you know it's it's hard for us with a desire to keep a bunch of tarantulas in one enclosure to undo hundreds of thousands of years of evolution <laughs> so sometimes some things just aren't possible tarantula tastic enclosures in the house saying hi to jojo i can't help but notice you didn't say hi to me thanks a lot steve <laughs> I'm just kidding. it's good to see you man thanks for joining the live stream uh, all right let's see what else we got here uh, some of these questions i've already answered so i'm just going to skip over them oh here's an interesting one do you prefer bioactive enclosures or more basic setups uh, i'm going to say that 100 percent depends on the species but 90 percent of the time i would say a more basic setup uh, i think one of the reasons i got into tarantulas and enjoy them so much is because they're so easy to take care of uh you know the, the husbandry requirements are very minimal so i just get a good substrate a hide a water dish and like you're good to go uh with bioactives you know, you got to worry about uh, isopods possibly or at least springtails and plants and and watering and keeping humidity levels and and adding you know kind of like um i mean it, there's more to bioactive than just springtails and isopods there's you know there's a lot of uh, microbial microbial my i can't speak today microbial there we go kind <laughs> of stuff going on in there you know so you, you gotta add some bio shots or something like that to kind of kind of help get that the, that little microphonic going 
Um, and then you got to have lighting and light cycles. And I mean, it's a lot of work. And I would say the majority of the species of tarantulas don't benefit from it at all. Uh, in fact, I've got a video on this channel. Uh, just it's a, I think it's called like, is our bi bioactives good for tarantulas? Kind of like a bioactive hype. Because I know it's, for, for whatever reason, they're really popular right now. Everybody's wanting to keep all their tarantulas bioactive. And it is cool. And they look gorgeous. I mean, the bioactive setups are, are very aesthetically pleasing. Um, it's just, if you've got a lot of tarantulas, it, it's a lot of extra work with really no benefit. Um, and sometimes it could actually be detrimental to a tarantula. Uh, it's, you see somebody keeping it up, uh, like a, a desert species in Arizona, blonde, or, you know, some kind of like arid species in a tropical bioactive enclosure, just cause they wanted the cool plants. It's like, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's risking the life of the tarantula and, and just, it's causing all kinds of problems. What else? tarantula fin is upset i did that three times well i mean uh let me scroll up there tarantula fins i thought i'd already answered your question i'm scrolling up i'm scrolling up i'm not seeing anything oh here's one. Oh damn my question what's next I, i'm trying to find you here tarantula fin i'm scrolling um i just see a lot of comments about you saying i didn't answer your question here's one i rarely watch lives or if i do i don't read comments because usually there's so much negativity but this is awesome i'm glad you're enjoying it um i, I don't know if you still had a question though i'm, I'm still scrolling I'm looking for a question actually you know what i, I can't do this tarantula fin if you still got a question just drop it in all caps and i will try to get it uh, taken care of uh, we do have a new channel member so thank you so much for channel welcome to the channel harry campbell it's good to have you as a member thank you so much for that i appreciate it um and you know like it says on the banner there if you got a question type it out in all caps it makes it a lot easier for me to, to kind of sort the questions out uh, amongst all the just kind of everybody just chatting and hanging out and going back and forth um and if you haven't checked it out yet uh i do have a second channel it's the exotic pet collective uh i think there's only like maybe like three point and a little over three thousand subscribers there and it's uh, where I post a lot of like small videos, like little two, three minute videos, or just mainly just like B-rolls of different species that I have in my collection. Uh, that I'm not really making a video about, but just kind of want to show you some of the footage I got. Uh, and it's also where I post the video versions of all my podcasts. So if, if you're interested in watching the video versions or, you know, you, you don't get on Spotify or anything like that, you want to see the podcast, uh, you know, go check it out. The Exotic Pet Collective got a link in the description of all of my videos. Um, and Jojo just said, bye every bye richard stay safe oh she's she's taken off <laughs> uh well bye jojo thank you so much for helping it out uh it was really i really appreciate it you take it easy um uh, scrolling down see if i can find anybody's questions oh we got uh oh, we just did that harry campbell's a new member what is the price of the afana pelma calcodes in the usa you know I, i've had mine for so long i don't know off the top of my head um but i would say it just guessing i would say a spiderling is probably like around 25 to 40 dollars kind of depends on the supply and demand uh, if you want to get like an adult female uh, i'm sure you can get a wild caught one for maybe 100 bucks um if you're getting like a captive bred wild uh, maybe like a captive bred uh, adult female i would say maybe 200 something like that but i don't know i, I really don't know off the top of my head <laughs> uh let's see that one lesbian says yeah it's expensive to have a communal can't wait to have about 40 communal though yeah i'm feeling that um and it says uh, i'm loving your live stream when i get my first tarantula i'll have you thanks awesome and uh big shout out to south africa uh that, that was mike's exotics the podcast i uploaded today he is from south africa we we're talking a lot about the tarantula hobby out there so uh he, he's a very cool guy uh jonathan mulligan says well what's your smallest tea right now is a little tiny itty bitty spiraling and it is i'm thinking it uh i can't remember it's a it's a it's a it's right there uh herotheli villicella um I, oh, I haven't seen you the video i, I recorded a video i i well, actually i got a gift card to somebody sent me a gift card to uh, fear not tarantulas and i had to like use it by the end of february so i placed an order uh and ordered a well i was going to order one tarantula and then i ended up buying a bunch like uh like this i got 
it's always sketchy uh picking up enclosures during a live stream because i dropped one once and it broke so <laughs> i'm always a little a uh, little sketched out but I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is like my first Australian species of tarantula. Uh, people have been asking for us to rant, uh, Australian tarantula video. So uh, soon I'll be able to do it. I'm going to let it grow a little bit more, but this is the uh, Eunice whistling spider. So uh, that's a very cool tarantula. Uh, so once it gets a little bit larger, I'll make a video on that. Um, but I did get a couple of very small species, uh, pseudohaplus species, Panama, I think. That one was really tiny. I mean, like I'm saying like really tiny, just then you almost, it was hard to see, but I recorded it and I'll, I'll put that out as a video here soon. All right. I put that back on the shelf with no issues. Uh, oh, here, tarantula fins. I got, I see it. And we got you. All right. So thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate your support. Um, and your question is, can you explain? Explain why my T Sturmy can't climb up glass. It doesn't have any grip on its legs and it's odd. Is it because of an old exoskeleton? I keep humidity somewhere around 70 to 80%. Uh, it, it could definitely be uh, exoskeleton. Sometimes when they molt, um, like they could not have a very good molt uh, and, and whatever, like they just have issues with the, you know, I don't want to say their paws. I can't think of like the, the hooks on the, on the tips of their legs. Uh, sometimes that could be a problem. Uh, I, but I have noticed personally a couple, it was actually the, my, my largest tarantula right now, my T Sturmy when it was like in pre um, you know, and it, it took it months once it was in pre it was in pre for months before it molted. And then just one day it, it just happened to molt <laughs> and I was able to catch it on camera, which is really exciting. Uh, but when it was in like heavy pre it, it didn't climb, it, it couldn't climb the glass either. It was, um, I've seen that with a few different tarantulas in fact, and I don't know scientifically why that is, but. I think when they're they're getting close to molting, um, sometimes they, they just they don't have that ability. Or maybe they have the ability, they're just lazy. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that is odd, and I know it could be concerning, but you really don't want your tarantulas climbing the glass anyways. So uh, it's, it's, it's cool, actually, you know, and it's probably good for it. Um, but I think that there's, there's man, I really don't know the scientific reason. I wish I could answer that for you. I'm better. Other than saying I have noticed that as well, and it's not something that I would be too concerned about. Um, but yeah, it could be the old exoskeleton. It could be that they, you know, they were they're having some kind of issue. But yeah, when you look at like um, macro photos of you know the tips of tarantulas, like you know they got that, that little tiny claw that they use. Um, I, I have a feeling it, it probably has something to do with that because uh, you know they're they're growing an exoskeleton, new one inside of their old one. So yeah, that could be part of the problem we've got one here it says do you find your fossorial species molt in their burrow or up on top uh majority of mine molt in their burrow and then throw their their molt on top of the, <laughs> the enclosure i don't think i've ever seen one of my fossorials come out and molt up top um at least i haven't seen that uh ariella i think that's how you say it top three rare and desirable teas in the u.s don't know i live in europe um well i would say personally uh, rare and most desirable top three t celadonia which is controversial but i think it's an awesome tarantula and uh, is very rare because its legal status is questionable um the Bernanopes, uh whatever that one is um i can never remember what it's called <laughs> Bernanopes, all it's like that that blue leg one that just came out not too long ago uh let's see what is that let's see I'll look it up real quick Oh, that's not gonna get to me. What I'm talking about? Put it in the chat. Save me, save me some time. <laughs> Bru uh something. I I can't think of it. So uh, I can't think of any. It's common or scientific name, but it's like a. It's got bright blue legs, and it was recently discovered. And it's in the hobby. I think that one is uh, that and the Therophosanae species Panama, the lava spider. I really want that tarantula. Uh, it's hard to find. Expensive. And people send me messages every now and then. They're like, hey, this person's got it for sale. And by the time I see the message and I click the link, they're sold out or they're expensive. And uh, since I've started doing this full time, um, like for a long time, any money that I made off of like super chats like you guys are sending now uh, or like ad revenue from watching the videos, that all was just kind of like money that I reinvested in camera equipment or buying enclosures or tarantulas and stuff like that. Um, but now that this is my full-time job, all that money goes to pay for like the Wi-Fi and the power and stuff like that. So I don't have a, a huge tarantula budget anymore, or at least at the moment. 
Um, but one day I'll get a Theraphos and a species panimal. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, Tarantula Finn says, even I can't find my comments. I posted it three times, caps lock. That's weird. And, and it is weird. And I know that I'm using a different pro. I'm using StreamYard. So sometimes not all of like I've got a chat feed over here on the on the on the side of the screen, but sometimes not everything that's in the YouTube chat shows up on the StreamYard chat for some reason. So I thought maybe it was just just me. Um uh, but yeah. Do you have an Athelia Mira? Yes, I do. Um I've actually got two of them. Uh I need to have like a list. I want to post a list on my website of all of the tarantulas I have because I, I get asked that a lot. Um I, I don't know i just felt like an invasion of my privacy <laughs> for some reason like I've, people ask me to post that before i'm like it's nobody's business what tarantulas i have or how many i have maybe i think the reason i don't do it is because i know my wife will then have access so when she asks me how many tarantulas do i have right now i can't lie to her <laughs> and give her and lowball her because she'd be like oh really because your website says <laughs> so so maybe that's why i don't do it yeah if we be honest uh, looks like we got uh, Chris Daly just joined as a new channel member. So thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I appreciate you joining. Uh, thanks for being a member. Channel member. And of course, as a channel member, you do get early access to most of my videos. Like when I post a video for like a Tarantula Tuesday video, I normally upload on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, I will have that video uploaded sometimes the day before or a few days before. And in that situation i go ahead and post a link so channel members or patreon members can watch the video first like before it's actually public uh and then you know every every a couple of weeks or so i will make videos just for uh youtube channel members and for patreon members so it's like exclusive content that doesn't go out to the public so if, if you want to get some you know kind of behind the scenes footage of you know me filming tarantulas or feeding or you know just whatever's going on uh, I try to keep you guys updated with like some special videos and photos and, and links and stuff like that. So, right. So what else we've got here? we got uh, Chris joining as a channel member. So thank you. Uh, we got another question. Harry says, also got to say the reason why I got my first tarantula was I came across your videos a few weeks ago and just fell in love with tarantulas. Well, that's awesome. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it sounded like I was getting emotional there. It's actually just uh, uh, this sparkling apricot water. You had, had me a little burp coming. <laughs> it's trying not to burp in your old ear. Uh, I'm I'm glad to hear that, man. That's that's uh that's a really cool. Rule. That's probably one of the highest compliments that I think I get is when people always say like I was afraid of tarantulas and came across your channel randomly, and now I I love tarantulas and I have started my own little collection. Like that's that's awesome to be able to uh, change people's perceptions and, and affect their lives in that way. So thank you. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. Greg McLean says howdy 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 back to you. All right, what else we got? Arthur Prod Ambassador says, Do you have a species from every continent now that you have the Whistler? Uh, I gotta think of the, I mean, I don't have a tarantula from Antarctica, so not every continent. <laughs> that sounds like a, a very smarty, uh, almost cussed. I'm not sure what how cussing goes uh, in these live streams. We'll try to keep it family friendly for right now. <laughs> Uh, that was a smart aleck answer. So Arthur Bond, Aaron, I'm I'm sorry to be smart aleck. Obviously, there's no tarantulas in Antarctica, but yes, now I have Australia, Asia, um, other European tarantulas. I don't think I don't think I have any, but I do have isopods from uh, Europe. So maybe that works. Uh, let's see. Skyborn says, "Do you still keep mantises?" I have a mantis left. Yeah, two mantises. I have the. I have one ghost mantis and a dead leaf mantis. Um, my orchid mantis matured out female and I uh, lived for a little while, but then ended up just kind of kind of dying, which was sad. Um, that was a beautiful, I love that orchid mantis. That was very cool. And uh, ghost mantis, I guess a couple, they were maturing out male. I still got one left. It seems to be doing well, but um, all the other ones have, have slowly passed away. Oh, what else we've got? And those actually came from Arthropod Ambassadors actually which is very cool that was very kind of you aaron for sending that out i really appreciate that got some cool footage of them scrolling down oh here's a good one chris daly says what dwarf species would you recommend for a new keeper oh man um if we're talking about ease of care and extremely docile uh it would be the homeoma species 
useless thread is that what it's called now i have they changed its name it's something else but uh the the flame rump tarantula uh, that one is an awesome awesome tarantula but uh they are difficult to find uh, and when you can't find them then sometimes they can be very expensive but they're they're just very inquisitive and friendly and just cool little dwarf tarantulas if you're looking for something more and like uh, a tarantula you can find easily readily available and inexpensively i would go with any sierra Cosmos species personally uh, it's one of my favorite genuses uh well you know there's there's and there's all kinds i mean there's the elegans and the oh man i don't even know if i can pronounce them all but i got a video on it a sierra Cosma species karen husbandry video and i showcase a lot of the different ones that i have and they're just beautiful the beautiful tarantulas great feeding responses they can be a little quick but they're really easy to take care of so i would suggest those or of course the pumpkin patch that's that's also a good one let's see we got uh, isaac the gamer says what's the best place to get desert blondes and choco goldenies mm, that's that's tough because i don't really i'm not on the dealer's websites uh, frequently because the i found that if i'm constantly looking at their websites then i'm really tempted to spend more money on tarantulas so i try to stay off of them unless i am like actively looking for something uh but I, i've got a list uh, if you go to my website the tarantula collective.com um scroll across the bottom there i've got uh, links to a whole bunch of different dealers and suppliers and a lot of them have discount codes so uh, i mean i got discount codes for fear on tarantulas uh simply spiders uh nature's exotic creatures um oh or nature's exquisite creatures i'm sorry uh micro wilderness uh, a lot of different tarantula dealers discount codes for like 10 15 off so you can save a little bit of money so and and i don't put anybody on that website that i haven't actually dealt with or i know personally so i mean there's other great dealers out there um i'm just because somebody's not on my website doesn't mean that i don't suggest them it's just these are companies that i know and uh, have dealt with and i'm comfortable suggesting to other people um and as i meet more people and and do business with other people and exp have experiences with them i'll add them to the website as well but yeah if you're, if you're looking for a list of dealers with some discount codes uh the places that i recommend uh check that out tarantulacollective.com it's under the resources tab Irie says my ghost manis has died one in orchid but i hate their short lifespan yeah i know that's that's like the bummer with true spiders and, and manises and stuff like that it's just the 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 short lifespan it's heartbreaking oh we got a new channel member did i already do this greg i don't remember 441 what time is it i feel like i'm missing a bunch of channel members for some reason i know i did chris daly i'm scrolling down i'm scrolling down tarantula finn i don't know if i announced you as a as a new member but i will so thank you you may have got a double dip there but <laughs> thank you very, very much tarantula finn i appreciate it and greg mclean also joining i feel like greg i did it but just to be appreciate your support it's very very cool of you guys joining as members so thank you very much um did i miss anybody else i think i got all um arthur Pride ambassadors says i'll be sending more manises i have way too many giant shield cat eye and ghosts plus you need another orchid and you're the best <laughs> that's all i gotta say uh and, and actually if if you want to get to know her better if you want to know aaron and arthur Pride ambassadors and what she's all about um she and i had a, a nice long conversation on uh, the exotic pet collective podcast so definitely check that out uh and and find all out all about find all how do i say that find out about find all about find out all about man english is tough find out about our arthropod ambassadors by listening to that website not website podcast jeez i need more coffee which i left like i went and made a pot of coffee poured myself a cup came down here to start the live stream and left it upstairs and i'm like god oh, it's so close but so far away uh, but back to the comments uh, let's see so th thank you thank you arthropod ambassadors i appreciate you sending some of those out that'll be very exciting um brum drill says i have a lasciadora periabana pink bird eater but i'm unsure of its sex it's got a nice size to it hmm. i'm not sure if that's a question um i also have a lasciadora periabana and it is definitely a male and it's huge but uh, it hooked out and uh I, and, and that broke my heart because I had, you know, years ago had, had pulled its molt and sexed it. And I, in my amateur opinion, was confident it was a female. And I took pictures of it and I posted it in my Facebook 
Facebook group and the Tarantula Collective Facebook group, as well as a few other Tarantula Facebook groups. And I asked people, I said, I think this is a female, but I'm not really good at this. What is your all's opinions? And overwhelmingly, people were like, oh, it's a female. And so I was like, hey, it's a female and made videos about it, talked about it. This is my female, Posidora Periabana. And then like its last molt, it molted and bam, hooks. I was like, oh, it's definitely, definitely not a female. So yeah, I'm not the best at sex and tarantulas unless it's like sexually dimorphic or something. Like I know that my Salmopius Victori is definitely a male because uh, it, it had that red and black half and half look to it. And, you know, if you've been watching the channel, you've seen, I posted some videos of it and uh, this last time I molted, now it's just straight up black. It's like all black and really leggy. So that's obviously a male, uh, same with my, um, Lamperpelm and Violet Seppies, um, the Singapore blue tarantula I had like a couple of those. One I bought as a female, the other I bought as, as just like unsexed spiderlings and they grew up and uh one of them was obviously a male because it went from like that blackish purple like kind of purple abdomen with black stripes and it molted and was just like straight up gold with some of the longest legs i've ever seen on a tarantula so yeah unless they're sexually dimorphic i'm not the best at uh at, at sexing them and i get so many messages especially on instagram people send me pictures and i'm like hey what sex is my tarantula it's like i, I don't know <laughs> i can't help you out there uh, I, I could guess as good as you can uh, there are people that are really good at doing that. They can do ventral sexing or, you know, look at a mold and tell you, and a lot, some of them are moderators in my Facebook group. So I'm like, just post it in the Facebook group. There's some really intelligent people that have a lot of experience with that and are really good. Uh, I don't like, I'm not breeding tarantulas. So I, I'll be honest. I just don't care. Like that's really where it comes from. There's so many other things in this hobby that I care about and want to focus on uh, determining the sex of my spiders, unless I'm planning on, on, you know, breeding them is not something I, I really care about and spend much time trying to figure out. Cause it's like, whether they're male or female, I'm still going to be keeping them the exact same way. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a lot of effort for information that really won't be that helpful. Um, and, and by the time it would be helpful, like I'll already know, cause I'll hook out and be like, Oh, it's a male. I can figure out what to do with them now. Uh, Ashley Mumi says, um, my one-year-old daughter loves you watching your videos always calms her down a one-year-old oh my gosh put some pressure on a guy now i really gotta watch my mouth <laughs> well thank you ashley i I'm, I'm glad that your your one-year-old enjoys watching the videos uh tell her i said hello little baby um my granddaughter is two, she turned two in february and i don't she does not like watching my videos <laughs> she uh because she sees like I'll, I'll like put it on just like mess with her and i'll like put it on the tv and like she hears me talking she recognizes my voice and she looks at the tv and sees me and then turns around and looks at me sit on the couch smiling at her and just like go get going back up like how are you on the tv this does not make sense to me <laughs> i think it stresses her out all right let's see what else we got here We got a question from Techno Raptor 777 says, Tarantula Collective, what are your thoughts on medically treating tarantulas? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Thoughts on medically treating tarantulas. Uh, if you mean like taking a tarantula to a vet, I think if your vet will see you and can help you. I've seen some videos on, on YouTube and on Facebook of uh, vets uh, like actually sedating a tarantula because maybe it got like glue on it or tape or something and they're trying to, to save it. I mean, if they know what they're doing, uh, yeah i would say take it and get medical treatment if that's what you're asking um i'm not sure if that's what you're asking though but personally i i don't have any veterinary or, or you know any kind of medical training so you know, i'm not good at that well tyler jumps jumped in to say hi thank you tiffany Steele says 444 i guess that's what time it was when she said oh yeah because her time stamp is 444 so <laughs> it's 444 i'm scrolling down trying to catch up with you guys um scrolling down how involved here's a good one uh james says how involved does your family get with your hobby my brothers have shown a big interest in my teas and i might gift them one if that's cool uh my family is my wife really likes the snakes my kid likes the geckos uh, but neither one of them really want to do much as far as uh you know feeding and, and cleaning enclosures and stuff like that so all that's mine the tarantulas and scorpions are all they, they like to come down every now and then and like look at them um they enjoy watching the videos and stuff like that but uh, they're that's totally not their hobby they're, they're not uh obsessed with it i guess you could say like i am um but 
my uh my stepdaughter did she does like them and uh, i gave her an avicularia avicularia a couple years ago that she keeps in her apartment um i've given my niece a leopard gecko and um one day i will give her a tarantula as well i mean i'm all about giving people tarantulas if it's somebody in my family or like a close uh, friend of the family's and there they express interest and i'm like well here you can have one of mine i got plenty <laughs> i'll give them one uh but that doesn't happen very often astronomical says i got a good recommendation for a more expert level tarantula oh man uh for expert level tarantulas that are awesome i that's tough uh I, in therapos of sturmy was is a great one gotta have that in your collection if, if you feel confident enough uh the cobalt blue is a great one um expert level tarantulas uh let me, let me take a quick look sometimes looking back really jogs my mind yeah I, I i don't know i mean it that's tough i mean any post lotharia species would be great um like the, I, I love the ornata i think that's a great pokey um but yeah uh i see another message from techno raptor says please answer my question i think i did yeah i did answer your question um tarantula dude says hello hello <laughs> Tarantula fin says, is my phone lagging or did the comment section die? Sometimes it, it dies or not dies, but you got to like refresh it. I've noticed that before watching live streams. I'm like, what in the world? Nobody's saying anything. Uh, Luke Stafford says, two questions. How do you care for the David Bowie Huntsman spider? And can spring tails, uh, spring tails isopods hurt a molting spider? Uh, was first question. How do you care for the David Bowie Huntsman? Uh, I have mine in one of these. I think it's in this enclosure. I keep it. No, it's not it's in a th it's like that enclosure a little bit shorter and a little bit thinner uh and, and i got that enclosure it's uh it's kind of like the nano small tall but it's uh, a little bit taller it's i think it's made by i want to say zilla it's a zilla enclosure arboreal enclosure and i cannot find them anywhere i was at the uh narbc and there was like a pet store that kind of had like one of those corner booths which is all kinds of enclosures and they were like 50 bucks they were selling them they were on sale or whatever uh, they're just these nice tall single door glass enclosures and i was like that's amazing it's really tall but also thin uh, i thought it'd be great for our boreal tarantulas and i got two of them and i was like i really liked them so i was like i'll get two of them because that's what i can fit in the car and um i'll go online and order some more and i got home and went online and can't find them anywhere <laughs> like even like i'll find them they'll be out of stock and like not i don't, I don't know if they discontinued them or or what but hopefully then i was like that when i did that i was like well i can't find them anywhere maybe that company that business will have some more at the next narbc which was supposed to be march of last year and of course it keeps getting pushed back and canceled because of covid so i haven't had a chance to e even get any more of them but i digress uh, i keep it just like i pretty much do any of my arboreal tarantulas a dry substrate got a large water dish in there uh good um foliage like i got some plants hanging around there i got a, a vertical cork bark and it mainly hangs out on the sides of the enclosure up towards the top and uh, you know i feed it kind of like once a week i might drop a, a cricket or two in there just kind of depend on its size and i got mine it was a little tiny spiraling and it's still not anywhere near full grown but it's definitely put on some size uh so that, that's how i take care of mine uh and can springtails and isopods hurt a molding spider springtails i don't think will do any damage at all they're, they're mainly uh, the, the top what they're looking to eat is is my fungus and mold and, and decay and stuff so that's not a problem the the isopod one is is definitely uh up for contention um uh people it, that's that's an argument people get into because you got a couple of youtubers out there who have posted videos and or make post comments or whatever saying that they have witnessed not just youtubers i mean keepers we'll just say tarantula keepers that they've witnessed isopods eating live tarantulas or live scorpions uh, or killing a scorpion or tarantula to eat it and uh you know and, and depending on the species of isopods there's, there's a wide range of species that have different calcium needs or protein needs and stuff like that so some species may be more apt to uh, to eat a molting tarantula or a dying tarantula while other species would show no interest at all um so what i did is i uh, i brought russ from aquarimax pets he's like uh probably the, the person i trust the most when it comes to isopods because uh, he's been breeding them and selling them and using them in bioactives for you know decades probably at this point uh, i actually did a podcast with him 
Uh, so check that out because we talk about that specific question in quite uh, some some serious depth about whether um, tarantulas will get eaten like a molting tarantula would would uh, isopod would start snacking on it and what he's experienced, what he's heard, stuff like that. Um, and pretty much what he said was there are a few species that that is probably a possibility because you know they they do have like the, a craving for calcium and or proteins or whatever that that may do something like that because they also are a little aggressive and territorial uh but he said that there's also plenty of isopods that would never have never shown any type of behavior like that and people you know that he's known as kept them in different types of bioactive enclosures and had no issues so uh i, I would just definitely check out that podcast i think you would you'd find that interesting all right andy campbell says question i've never seen asked is the circadian rhythm important for tarantulas um you know that's uh i don't know i'll be honest uh i i think it, it's a lot more important to reptiles and like plants and stuff like that uh i think that yes is the is the right answer but it's not something that you really have to think about because if your tarantula is in a room with ambient lighting like the light coming in from the windows when the sun's out or you having the lights turned on while you're moving around your house that's more than enough light to kind of help them decipher between night and day um you know they, they don't need like a bright daylight you know to kind of wake them up and, and and get all the like the vitamin d or d or whatever it is that you know they need to uh, their body needs to kind of produce based off the sunlight uh, being absorbed through their skin you know they, they don't have that worry i think it's mainly just like a nighttime daytime kind of thing so just ambient light like i don't i mean i have lights on when you look at all of my enclosures back here they all have lights but those lights are only on because we're on camera right now. Like when I turn all this off and I go upstairs, I also turn all this off. You know, I'm just not like wasting electricity. Uh, the lights are just for pretty much for me. Um, if I'm coming down to like enjoy looking at the collection or feeding and watering and stuff like that, I'll turn all the lights on. But I don't like, I don't have them. I mean, my bioactives, uh, like by pointing whoop, down, like this little shelf right here uh, in this little area, which you can barely see if i go like that <laughs> something like that with a bright light is here next to me that little section of the shelf has like three bioactive enclosures so there's a bioactive light there uh these um enclosures over here are bioactive and these are my snakes and stuff down there so those are on times timers so they're, they're on like a kind of a light cycle but everybody else it's just they get enough light from just those enclosures shining in the room lighting up the room and the, the windows i have here it, that's more than enough for them Oh, let's see. <laughs> Merck Place says, uh, what beard care products do you use, if any? Oh, man, if any. <laughs> like, pretty much all I got for Christmas from my family and friends was beard care products. I got, like, Viking beard combs and beard butters and oils. Uh, there's there's another one, uh, Monster. I can't remember what it's called. It's like monster beard oil or something. It was like a little uh, kind of tin of like 15 or 13 different beard oils. They're all like movie, like uh, monster movie themes. There's like a, a vampire hunter and uh, the mummy and, you know, just, just different, the swamp monster <laughs> and just different scents of beard oils, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I mean, pretty much, I don't have like one brand of of beard oil but essentially that's that's all i use oil and then uh like the butter so i'm like every every time i take a shower i put some of that beard oil in it and then if i'm like going out then i'll put some beard butter in to kind of make it shape up a little bit better but other than that that's about it all right let's see what else we have Mick Lobster says, I have a fun little question. So let's see what that is. What is your favorite tarantula? Mine is the curly hair. Oh, I, I think I've answered that question a couple of times now. Um, it would have to go GBB. Green bottle blue is definitely one of my favorite tarantulas that I have. Like I'm sure there's other tarantulas that I would I, I would also really like, but <laughs> that's the one that I have. Um Ariella says, granddaughter, we don't believe you, young man. <laughs> no, it, her name is Rosie, and she is definitely let's see uh before me and my wife got married she um had a child maggie and when she was young and then maggie had rosie when she was young 
So I'm a very, very young grandfather, <laughs> step grandfather, technically, I guess we could say. <laughs> uh, but I treat her like she's my flesh and blood granddaughter. She is a sweetheart. And she, she enjoys coming down here. And, and I think she likes the lights of the enclosures more than anything. I don't think she has really figured out those are tarantulas that are living things, but she likes coming down and just opening her eyes, looking around like, ooh, it's pretty down here. <laughs> Would you ever consider getting a caiman? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, but I, it's not on the top. of It's not high on my list. And I'm, I'm just with reptiles right now. I'm just a little, uh, I, I just want to be very, I know how I am and how quickly my tarantula and scorpion collection grows. I don't want to do, I don't want that to happen with reptiles because I don't want to get in over my head. All right. Do you have any lizards? Uh, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, talked about that already. Geckos, day geckos, snakes, uh, stuff like that. Oh, uh, we got a super chat. Let me scroll down. If I can get to it. Where is it? Man, I'm I'm really behind on on all of your old messages. I'm trying to keep up, but I'm I, I sometimes I just uh, talk way too much. So this is from Nicholas Hess. <laughs> Uh, he says, I just wondering whether I should feed really small slings, fruit flies, or cricket legs. Thanks. Uh, it, I think that just depends on what you're comfortable with, dude. Uh, I, I do both. Um, if you I actually have a video, uh, it's like how to feed spiderlings or something like that. It's on my YouTube channel. Highly suggest you watch that because I kind of go over all the different methods that I use for feeding my tarantulas. Uh, if you're feeding them just uh, like sometimes I'll cut up mealworms or um, cricket legs or something like that. So I'll talk about how I do that um and and that's good if your tarantula is cool with scavenge feeding sometimes i've noticed there have been some spiderlings that i have that uh they don't scavenge feed very well like uh, i'll drop it on there go back check it the next day it doesn't eat it so i'll pull it out drop it in a fresh piece and then they don't eat it and it seems like they don't eat it until they get really hungry uh, in those cases i use flightless fruit flies uh, and and i talk about the trick that i use in that video so definitely check that out because they're a lot easier to, to deal with than some people realize um, but essentially all i do is i I, I stick them in the fridge for like 10 minutes or so and until they're like then it doesn't kill them but it, it kind of like it really slows them down and then you can like put, dump them in a cup and you know drop a few into each one and, and not have to worry about them jumping around and making a huge mess until they start warming up again uh but yeah definitely check out that video uh but i, I would go with if it were me and they're really really small i feed my really really small ones it's fruit flies uh, McLobster says, do you have any chameleons? I do not. I don't have any chameleons. Right, let me scroll back up, see what I missed here. Uh, read that one, read that one. So, there we go. Um, Tyler says, any care videos for Damon Diadema or any similar tailless whip scorpion? Sorry for the second question. Got mine. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do have a video. Um, and it was, it's actually funny because I thought it was a Damon Diadema. That's how it was sold to me. I believe, no, I think it was just sold to me as tailless whip scorpion, but I had like posted some pictures of it and people said, hey, it's a, it's a DD Damon. And however you say that. And uh, I was like, awesome. So I made the video on it uh, and then took some more macro photos recently and posted those. And people were like, no, that's that's Damon Medeus. It's a it's a different species, same genus, different species. So I had to go back and change it. But the care is essentially the same. I do have a video on my YouTube channel. Um, just search Taylor Swift Scorpion. Uh, it'll pop up, or you know, I think it's under the Scorpion and Invert playlist on my channel. You'll find that and videos on the Fingaroon and and other scorpions and things of that nature. So yeah, definitely watch that. Check that out. Um, let's see. Greg McLean says, can tarantulas smell? Not stick, but smell sense. Oh, I think you mean not stink. <laughs> yeah, my tarantulas don't really smell. The substrate smells, but not so much the tarantulas. Uh, I don't, I don't, man, it, these are like scientific questions. And I'm just going to tell you my understanding, but please don't quote me because I am not an arachnologist. Though, I will have arachnologists on the podcast very soon. So questions like that, I will definitely be asking them because because they will definitely know the answers. Um, but from what I understand, they don't have a, a, a nasal cavity like humans do or dogs or anything like that. So they don't, that's not really what they're smelling, but they can sense uh, like chemicals in the air that, you know, would have a scent. Um, kind of, and I believe that's through 
some of their sete and stuff like that. So hopefully that helps. But then again, I don't know. You guys, you guys are asking some tough questions. <laughs> Here's one that says, uh, when you put crickets in your Asian forest scorpions enclosure, how do you know it'll be able to find them? The enclosure for mine is quite detailed and I don't want to tear it apart to try finding them. Well, I, I don't know. I, mine, my enclosures are pretty simple. I just got a hide on each end. One's a kind of a damp hide. One's a dry hide. One side of the enclosure is warmer. The other side's cooler. And, um, usually when i feed them like i know they're ready to feed because they'll be at the mouth of their burrow i just see like the, the big little claw sticking out so i'll drop a cricket in and then they'll usually run up and eat it uh, of course i also check back the next day if i don't see the cricket crawling around anywhere i'm pretty certain that it ate it uh, that's that's pretty much how i would answer that question i don't have an extremely intricate enclosure where there's plenty of places for crickets to hide so you know, i haven't really been faced with that issue Andy Campbell says, I asked about the circadian rhythm because I work evenings and I don't usually go to bed until 2 a.m. I uh, have lighting for each enclosure that I turn on when I wake up around 9 a.m., uh, but I do get the sun at 6-ish. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I the, the thing with tarantulas is that if they don't want to see the light, they just go hide in their burrow, and it's nice and dark down there, so it's not going to bother them. So I, I don't think it's like going to screw up their development or anything like that. Uh, and again, I'm not an arachnologist. I don't know this for sure, but I feel like there are other things uh, that we can't control very well that they use more for uh, kind of a feeling of what season it is and stuff like that, like temperatures and humidity. I think that that may have more of an impact on them than light. Uh, the Tarantula Life says, Richard, I'm just turning in. How excited are you for the Fatal Fangs 3 competition? I'm very excited. And actually, I feel like I'm stepping on the toes of Amy's live stream. Did I, am, am I doing that? Let me double check. Uh, I know she was doing a live stream here very soon. Scheduled for 4 p.m. Oh, no. Oh, wait, that's tomorrow. Today's a, I know that's in two days. That's Saturday night. Stay away. So hopefully I'm not, I'm not stepping on somebody else's toes when they're trying to live stream as well, but I am excited. I can't wait to see your all's, uh, all, all your all's videos. It's going to be very cool. Oh. Uh, a long time ago, I took care of, Oh, we've got Nicholas Hess. Oh, I already answered that. I already answered that question. I'm just now catching up to the super chat, <laughs> which thank you very much for that. Um, that was oh, but I have another one. Here we go. Get your little super chat. Thank you. Super James Linhart says, "Have you ever felt overwhelmed by your collection or social media? When is the next exotic pet too many?" That's, I mean, the the short answer is yes. Uh, multiple times I have felt overwhelmed, um, and it's not so. Much, it's like one or the other. You know what I mean? Like, I will be, I'll be fine with the collection but the social media starts to get a little overwhelming you know like trying to get new content posted on instagram and tiktok and, and youtube and facebook you know making sure I, I try to at least post something every day or every other day and like coming up with stuff to post and editing photos and videos and, and all that can can really get overwhelming especially when you're first starting out and you don't really know what you're doing everything seems to take a whole lot longer um but i always try to put the pets first you know what i mean like the tarantula scorpion snakes those are always first so if I don't, if I, if I don't have time to feed them, then I don't have time to post on uh, social media. You know what I mean? Like their care has to be taken care of. Once that's done, then the rest of the time can, can be, um, you know, used for making videos and stuff like that. Um, and, and finding that balance, when is the next exotic pet too many, uh, is something that, you know, I, I've actually spent a lot of time thinking about and, and worrying about, um, and have made multiple videos at this point about like, you know, where are you, are you addicted to buying tarantulas or, you know, where, how to, how to keep from going overboard and getting too many too fast. So, I mean, I mean, if you're really curious about how I felt, how I feel about that and what I think, like I've got some, a couple of different videos on my channel and I really dive in depth and a whole podcast with, uh, um, Patricia from, um, uh, Spinnerant magazine. She also has a tarantula heaven, uh, Facebook page and website and all that kind of stuff. And she's, uh, therapist so we, we were talking a lot about that um you know getting out, feeling overwhelmed with tarantulas or uh buying too many exotic pets too quick so you know a lot of content out there i've already put out 
that will answer that question for you. Um, but I mean, the short answer though is yes, I, I, I did have definitely felt overwhelmed. Um, and that's why, you know, I, I'm not adding more snakes or more reptiles. Really. I'm slowly doing that. Um, slowly adding, you know, even like telling people that they'll offer to buy me tarantulas. And I'm like, I can't take on any more right now. Like you really got to find out where, where, where your boundaries are and, uh, what your limitations are and stick to it. Uh, cause you know, you're really just gonna be hurting like the tarantulas don't deserve that you know i should be taking good care of them all right we got some more comments here but thank you for the super chat james i, I do appreciate that. that was a great question and delta raven says nice beard man thank you i appreciate that all right Harry says his podcasts are always amazing too um i don't know if you're talking about me or somebody else but if you're talking about me thank you <laughs> That, that one lesbian says, I'm so stoked. I died to talk to an arachnologist in real life. Yeah. I've, I've met a few of them on Twitter and have talked to them about coming on and doing, uh, you know, some kind of, kind of po interview on the podcast. And for the most part, they're like, maybe, or just straight up. No, like, I don't know who you are or like, no, cause you're too heavily evolved in the pet trade and you know, that the whole pet hobby. So yeah, I have no interest in being associated with you. I'm I'm all about the science. Um, but then I, I, I just recently some some of them have been agreeing to like, yeah, sure, we'll go ahead and do that. I think it'd be interesting. So I think it's it's partly just because how I've been handling the podcast that the the especially because we're really we've been talking a lot about conservation and stuff like that. So I think that's made some people realize we're not just trying to sell tarantulas or something. Like I don't I don't have a dog in that fight, I'm not making money off selling tarantulas. Um that and I, I also think having um coyote peterson agreeing to do a podcast kind of added some serious credibility to it so i think now more people are a little more willing to to, to do that so hopefully we'll get some really cool guests on in the near future and i can't wait for you guys to to see that i want to i want to see if i can pull up i want to pull i'm going i want to share i mean we're over two hours here i don't even know if anybody's still watching i mean obviously a few people are um but I'm just going to check real quick, see how many people we got in the live stream. Where is that one? Uh, we got 64 people watching. Okay. And has that been running the whole time? That's not good. You guys want to see a, you guys want to see a little sneak peek of the, of the podcast with Coyote Peterson? Now, this is completely unedited. Can I find it? Nope. Nope. Where is it? Oh, look at this. I don't know. I don't see anybody answering. So maybe, maybe you're not interested. That's cool. If you're not, that's totally cool. Or maybe there's just a lag in the chat. That is also a possibility, <laughs> but I haven't, uh, Arthur Prod ambassador says, yeah, okay. That's, that's all I need. A vote from you, Aaron. Is it, Welcome is it, is to it the exotic to pet collective. My name is Richard. Thank you. Um, but again, I will say this is completely raw, unedited, un, uh, uncut. Also, uh, I haven't been able to add any um, effects to the vocals or anything like right now. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Let me think I find a good. Ultimately, ended up being a pretty. Scroll back a little bit. We'll play just a, a little a little taste here. Oh, Coyote, I is, has there uh, been. All right. I don't even know where we're at. I'm just going to share this with you guys. Just this random, <laughs> random little uh, piece here. All right. I just kind of queued up a little section. I'll we'll play it for you guys. Can I make that full screen? There we go. Let me hide that. There we go. In your history, making YouTube videos, and uh, you've got you got the the show on Animal Planet. Have you had any close calls where you needed hospitalization, or or at least your crew was considering taking you to the hospital? Uh, not throughout the making of the television show. And again, you know, good production always puts you in the safest scenarios possible. The amount of research that you do, taking your time, trying to be as careful as possible whenever interacting with any animal species. And again, we're constantly working with experts in the field, whether you see them on camera or not. We 
take every protocol that we possibly can to ensure the safety of myself, the animals, and of course the crew. The only time that I've ever had to seek medical attention was actually after the giant desert centipede bite. And that was on my own accord after nine hours of excruciating pain to the point. And when we say excruciating, it's like, you think that it might be better to cut off your arm because it might be less painful to be missing an appendage than it is to continue dealing with the pain of the venom. Uh, and I essentially went to an emergency center, sort of made up a clever story for what happened to me. So it didn't seem like I intentionally got myself bitten by a centipede. Um, and, you know, they basically prescribed me like a super strength uh, Advil, so to speak, just basic painkillers to say, look, this is going to take the edge off. The swelling will probably go down within, you know, the next 24 to 48 hours and you'll be fine. And, you know, people don't know a lot about centipede bites because there aren't that many people getting bitten by giant desert centipedes. So my education in the subject matter ultimately ended up being a pretty cool, like long term test that I could probably write down or share with somebody that wanted to do a journal entry someday. Um, but the biggest discomfort actually came in the following two weeks with the amount of itching that came from the bite. Um, I ended up having this almost like a, a couple of BB sized lumps in my arm, uh, kind of where the uh, fangs or the, the pinchers went into my arm. And I don't know if that was like the destruction of cells underneath the skin, but I would have several times throughout the day where my arm would just like flare up with this uncontrollable itch and it would swell back up. And then after I stopped messing with it, you know, and about 45 minutes later, it would swell back down. And this happened consistently day on and day off for about two weeks after the centipede bite. So, so there's, there's a little, a little taste, <laughs> a little, uh, sneak peek of the podcast. <laughs> uh, he was, he was very, very kind, very, uh, very interesting to talk to. Um, and my kid loves him and did not believe me that I was uh, going to be interviewing him. <laughs> and I was like, no, I, I swear I'm totally doing it. And he's just like, yeah, right. And I was like, and, and, and I kind of fed into that because I was like, well, please don't tell anyone yet. Cause I don't, the last thing I want to do was announce that I was going to be doing a podcast with Coyote Peterson. And then, um, oh, I just got a message. Well, one second, make sure it's not important. Uh, and then it fall through because it was like, it was too good to, to be true. So, um, I, I, I did not, um, I did not want him to tell people like I told my wife and him, that was about it. Uh, and the people that were involved in getting it all set up. Uh, but it, it was, it was awesome that, uh, he, it did happen. So as soon as it happened, like while we were recording it, <laughs> I was taking screenshots and sending it to my son. <laughs> like, see, I told you I'm actually talking to Coyote Peterson. <laughs> and now he's like, is that going to be like live on YouTube where people can watch it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll totally be on YouTube so people can see it. <laughs> That's why I did it, buddy. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Arthur Pod Ambassador says, "Amazing, thank you." It was it was a lot of fun, and it turns out he's only like a few hours from me. Like, uh, so yeah, he's just just a couple hours from where I am. So um, I I, I don't know. Hopefully, in the future, maybe. Uh, I, I, said, I was like, if you never need an extra cameraman, like you know, give me a shout. <laughs> if, if like one of your cameramans sick or can't make it to a shoot, let me know. I'll I'll uh, I'll drive over and and see what I can do to help you out. I think that would be fun. Uh, let's see. <laughs> she said, I'm so glad I stuck around instead of showering now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, showers are good. People, you, you should shower. But yeah, I'm glad you stuck around too. <laughs> got a little got a little sneak peek there. Um, and the sound of quality and everything will be better when I, I, I'm able to actually edit it. But I mean, I literally just recorded it yesterday. And as soon as I'm done hanging out with you guys, which I was going to dip out like, 20 minutes ago um but, but we're sticking around you guys are hanging out we got 60 people in here um so, so you guys that are sticking around i got these cool tarantula collective stickers they're a little holographic kind of fancy ones um i mean i got here i got one two three four five six seven eight i got ten we'll give ten stickers away today um so you guys are still hanging out in the chat uh, you get so you get a little bonus uh, you, get, you get to see a sneak peek of the podcast with Cody peterson and you have a one in six chance of winning a sticker, which is uh, or one in ten chance of winning. Six. No, I can't. I have, I'm so bad with math. One that would be a one in six chance. If there's ten stickers or sixty of you, yeah. 
Anyways, uh, Richard Howe was your Brocky Pelma. My Brocky Pelma's are doing well. If you're talking about the Tila Cottle Vaughans, uh, she's doing fine. She's I'm um, just waiting for it to drop a sack. What is your favorite Brocky Pelma? Asks uh, CR7. That would be the Brocky Pelma. Mamie, Amori, Amelia. Man, that's a tough one. I'm going to say, again, looking at my collection, I'm going to, um, I, I, you know what? It's easy. That's an easy one. Brocky Pelma Erotum, the Mexican Flame Knee. I love that tarantula. They're so amazing. Uh, Delta Raven says, uh, Coyote is one crazy dude letting all those different animals bite him. Yeah. And, and that was something I missed. Like while we were talking, I kept making the mistake. Like, cause there were some species of inverts that he is like, I'm like, well, you let this, one, like, how, how was, you know, I'm asking him about, uh, the bite from, uh, like the toe biter. Um, but I said sting and he was like, no, that's actually a bite. And th so th these sting and these bite. And it, and it was interesting. Uh, just kind of talking about that stuff. So it, it was, it was pretty cool. Um, Ooh, uh, twisted pixie says do you have any do you have or plan on getting any dart frogs i don't have any uh after talking to amphibicast about dart frogs at, at great lengths I, I i don't know for a long time i've wanted to get them every time i go to the pet store and i see them i'm really tempted to get them um but i haven't i haven't i haven't uh, haven't done that yet maybe one day but nothing uh, i have no plans on it in the near future uh arthur Brown ambassador says uh from my experience most career keepers have a morbid fascination of the what if i get bit so a lot of us naturally look upon Kyrie peterson early in our collection to watch him get bit yeah and that's you know it, I, I know that he's a controversial figure um in like the wildlife uh kind of uh, uh cater uh or even like the pet hobby i think more so he's more controversial than the pet hobby because people feel like he's given inverts a bad name or something I'm, I'm not exactly sure why uh but if you actually like watch his content like the entire video not just like the little clip that goes viral on facebook and instagram and stuff like that i mean he does talk a lot about uh where these species come from and and their natural habitat and conservation and uh and and, and something i learned through the, talking to him through the podcast it's like he's not getting bit or stung by these things like his intention is not just for like shock value and to get views um though that is part of it it's also uh, in an attempt to be like these things aren't as scary as you think they are like if i can intentionally get stung by this wasp um and and survive like i can show you yeah it hurts but it only hurts for five minutes or 20 minutes or you know a couple of hours uh, then you're not going to be as scared of it like a general person in public isn't going to be as scared of it so they may not kill it as quickly and also it, it really kind of shows how much work you have to like how, how much effort you have to put into getting stung you know like a lot of these species are going to run away from you way before they'll try and, and bite you or sting you uh let's see how does coyote how does coyote peterson fit on the plane to go to brazil to get stung by any bullet <laughs> that's funny uh here's here's a good question i get a lot uh, andy i think this, this is a good one to talk about before we wrap things up uh, is there such a thing as too large of an enclosure my son wants a blondie when i get when i when it gets large, he wants to build a 55 gallon with a waterfall and have him and half of it with fish. Uh, I mean, I, I don't, if, if it's only like half of it, so half of 55, that'd be like 27 gallons. Uh, and I know a lot of people that keep T blondies or T stermies in 20 gallons. And that's, that's a good size. So I don't think that would be that bad. Um, but I, I think when it when it comes to too large of an enclosure, in my personal opinion and experience, that has to do with spiderlings and juveniles. That's where I would I would really say that's probably too big. Uh, that's where I would be worried about size. For adults, not so much because you know they they're they're larger. And, I mean, obviously there can be enclosures. Put in like a three hundred gallon aquarium, man, yeah, it's probably going to be way too big if that even exists. <laughs> but yeah, you just want to make sure you got enough room that you that they can find the prey when you drop it in there. You know, that, that's the biggest thing. Um, what we got? Scrolling through. What do you think about the Colombian fire leg? The Colombian fire leg. Is that the Mega Fapelma? Uh, if the, yeah, if that's one, I think that's an awesome tarantula. I would love to have one in my collection, but I don't have one. Almost got one recently. I don't remember why I didn't, though. Uh, but I. Do you think I got another Megaflopelma species? A different species, same genus. 
thanks for all you do in educating us nudities oh no problem arcadia ter Ar arcadia territory um uh tell soto one two three four i do not wait sir i have some a lot of siri apocopus but i don't think i have the haiti haiti uh, scrolling through megan mega mewtwo says thanks for reading my comment i'm super excited oh you're very welcome um Ah, uh, here's a, here's an interesting question. Do you think it will be possible in the future for tarantulas to have color morphs? And no, I, d I don't think. Uh, when, when you're talking about morphs, um, the example I use is ball pythons. Like there's all kinds of different morphs in, in, in ball pythons, and but they're all the same species, and, and they're just kind of using like genetic traits and, and breeding selectively breeding to get different colors and patterns and, and things like that. Uh, but they're all the same species. When you're talking about tarantulas, the each different tarantula is, is a completely different species. Some of them in completely different genuses and they can't crossbreed. So, I mean, you, you can't take like a orange baboon tarantula and cross it, crossbreed it with a Gramostola um, pulchra or something like that to get a cool black and orange tarantula. Like that, they just won't happen. Like they're not going to breed even if they attempted to, I, I don't think it would be successful. Um, the only times we really see crossbreeding from my understanding is closely related cousins kind of that's what we'll say um you know like um uh like two different genuses in the brachypelma species or something like that you know like um uh like the curly haired tarantula or or sometimes you see it with um mexican red knee tarantulas like maybe a mexican red knee will be get bred with a mexican flame knee or something and they're two different species in the same genus and maybe there's a possibility that they would be able to crossbreed and then it would be like what they call a hobby form but generally that's that's uh frowned upon greatly nobody really you can't really sell a crossbred tarantula nobody really wants to buy that uh, and if they do buy it then they're not going to breed it because they don't want to perpetuate that you want you don't want to muddy up the bloodlines i guess you would say or the species but yeah so uh yeah I, I i don't think it's possible and if it somebody did find a way to do it then they probably uh it would it would it's not something that would be considered a good thing that people would would be interested in buying and supporting um but let's give away um Let's give away some stickers real quick. MC Lobster says, where are you based out of? I am in West Virginia here in the USA in between Ohio and Pennsylvania, I'm like 45 minutes outside of Pittsburgh. So uh, sometimes on social media, I'll say I'm from Pittsburgh because if I told you what town I'm in, you would be like, I know who has any idea where that is? <laughs> but he has any idea. Um, uh, oh, look, Arthur Pond Ambassador is doing a giveaway. Anyone still around? If you message me on Instagram, uh, I'll enter you for a chance to win some bug tarantula stickers. I'll send to five random entries. Very, uh, very cool of you, Arthropod Ambassadors. So follow her on Instagram. That is awesome. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to ask a few questions, like trivia questions, and uh, uh, about like recent videos that I've, I've, I've put out. So if you've watched those videos and you know the answer, and the first one that I see in the chat, which I you know, always, always got to give this kind of disclaimer, it, it may, not, may not be the first that you see in the chat because sometimes with how it appears in my chat like if two people send a message at the same time uh your message may appear before the other person's for whatever reason uh it's just kind of a weird how youtube works is weird sometimes uh so i go off of what i see in my chat so if there are two people answered at the same time don't get upset uh because i said somebody else won and you see in your chat that your comment came through first but you know it, it's just kind of unfortunate but that's that's how it goes so um we're going to go back with uh to my most recent video um <laughs> tyler says every time i think every time i hear richard says west virginia i think of that song yeah take me home country roads to the place i belong <laughs> west virginia mountain mama all right so i'm gonna stop singing and uh, <laughs> Are those the stickers available to buy at some point? If we don't win out of curiosity, these particular stickers, they're not. I have similar sticker. It's not holographic, but it's just that same pattern available on my website in three different sizes. You can get it anytime, um, which I'll show you on the bottom screen here. Bam, there we go. There's a link, uh, all, all different merch and care sheets, discount codes, all that kind of stuff. You can find on my website. To get this sticker, though, the only way to get it is to win it um or if you join uh like patreon 
uh i've been sending this out to patreon members too like i've got these cool little um magnets it says hardcore supporters got the the logo on there so i send those out to patreon uh, members and then i think it was like anybody that's like five or ten dollars or more a month then i throw on one of these as well but we're going to give some of these away i mean I, I i have sold them in the past the problem with it is like all my merch goes to a company that handles printing and fulfilling the orders for me um and then when, anytime i add for much on the website that doesn't go through them sometimes it gets lost like uh i don't i the the 90 percent of the order goes to the company they fulfill it ship it and i don't see that one little thing that i'm supposed to be sending and then people get upset like hey you dropped this off my order and then i feel bad and i don't want to give people a bad experience so i try to i've pretty much stopped selling anything that doesn't go through that company uh for the time being but we're gonna give away so um if you can tell me first person can tell me what species of uh what what species i unboxed in the last video um you're gonna you're gonna win one of these stickers so uh, I, i'm waiting i'm waiting i'm waiting uh, arthropod says ooh, exclusive yeah and they're exclusive because i am lazy maybe <laughs> So uh, I'm waiting for some of the first answer, correct answer to pop up here in the chat. If you can tell me what the what species I unboxed in uh, th this past video. Oh, here we go. First one that comes up. Jonathan Mulligan says rubber duck. Uh, there was a lot of people very close behind him, but that was the first one that uh, came up on my feed. So congratulations, Jonathan. If you want to claim your sticker, they, they're, I'm going to put it up here. I'm going I'm to show you exactly because this is always an issue um i'm gonna, I'm gonna give you my email address okay i am back <laughs> whoa why did i do it three times I lagged out for a second. Bam. All right. So there is the email address, the tarantula collective at gmail.com. So if you want to claim your prize, uh, then you need to send me a message. And uh, that, uh, who was the winner? I already forgot. There we go. Jonathan Mulligan. I believe that was you. So send me an email to that email address with your name, the obviously Jonathan Mulligan. And in the, in the, what do they call that the subject like saying give a live stream sticker winner or something like that so i know who you are and and can get that sent out to you so congratulations jonathan uh oh we got a new channel member uh let me play the little channel member thing real quick channel member. and we had a question it was uh is it better to be a channel member or uh join patreon that was from greg mcclain Subscribe here on, on here or Patreon. And that, it really depends on you. Uh, what is you're looking for? If you want to get like a sticker and a magnet, then definitely go through Patreon. If you want the cool little uh, member icon next to your name, um, then go through YouTube. Uh, so I guess it depends on if you're in a lot of the live chats and, uh, you know, like the live premieres and stuff like that. Uh, if, you're, if you're wanting to have that member badge you can only get that through youtube like youtube's i can't like give it to patreon members youtube is very restrictive about that so they will only put that up automatically on people that join uh, here on youtube if you want both then you can subscribe to both because i mean you can do like the low tier like two dollars a month on each one like instead of like doing five dollars a month on one you can split it to two dollars a month on both of them and that way you can still get the magnet and still get the, the badge uh, for the live streams if that helps so uh Oh, tarantula cat is in the is in the 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 what is it called live chat? There we go. <laughs> Thank you for the the five dollars. Uh, I appreciate that cat. <laughs> that was very kind of you. It's good to see you. Um, uh, Tyron says, I was wondering if there's a problem for a tarantula being in complete darkness during nighttime. No, I don't think that'd be a problem at all. I mean, if they, when they're out in the, the desert, it's completely dark. <laughs> I mean, maybe like a little moonlight or starlight or something. Uh, I, I think that they're, they're definitely going to be fine and would probably prefer it, I, I would say. Because even, I mean, something we see is completely dark. They're more than likely there's some kind of light shining in the room at some, somewhere and you know, they're able to, to utilize that. Um, so, uh, next question. We got that, that sticker given away. If you can tell me, uh, 
who was not not counting today actually we'll do today who was uh who was i talk, who was i talking to on the podcast that just came out today do you know who that was uh you know be sure to first person that i see you're gonna win you just gotta you can either either his name or uh, his youtube channel which is essentially the same but <laughs> first one that comes up we're waiting we're waiting No, Coyote Peterson, that comes out next week, uh, next Thursday. Uh, I talked to somebody else from South Africa this Thursday. Just came out today. This is kind of an unfair question because I'm sure most people haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Oh, we got one. Mike's Exotics. That was Tyler G Gerard. Is that how you say it, Jerron? Congratulations. Uh, you just send me an email, Tyler, to, uh, let me put it back up here, right there, the tarantula collective at gmail.com. Put your full name in there and uh, the subject line sticker winner uh, or like live stream sticker winner, and I will get that sent out there to you. So uh, congratulations. And uh, if you can tell me who was, uh, I did a, a podcast last week with a couple. We were talking about keeping as a couple. If you can tell me who those people are, uh, either their YouTube channel name or their actual names, I will I will get you a sticker sent out as well. So let's see who, who's going to have that one. <laughs> Giving stickers away to the people that actually listen to podcasts, I guess. Um, JB says, oh crap, I caught this live late. Yeah, I'm, I'm wrapping it up. Uh, we've already gone like two and a half hours. I was planning on going two hours. So I'm going to give away a few stickers and, th and then we're going to have to, oh, we got one. Uh, let's see. Oh, not that one. I'm sorry. Uh, Tyler, Tyler, you just won, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip you, and I'm gonna go for the next one. Um, so we're gonna go with uh, the first one I selected, Ariel Holmes, Alternative Inverts. C congratulations, Ariel, you are correct. Uh, so you want a sticker as well? Again, send me an email to that email address with your name or your screen name, um, and then sticker live stream sticker winner in the, in the subject line, so I know what you need. Sorry, Tyler, I appreciate you putting that out, but I'm trying to spread out the love a little bit. <laughs> Um, he says, I love alternative inverts. They rock. Oh well, yeah, they're, they're very cool. All right. Next question. If you can tell me first person that says, uh, tells me answers this question, I guess I'm really bad at this. <laughs> I shouldn't do game shows. Uh, but we'll give the sticker away to, you can tell me what species it was that I put a video out, uh, that I was breeding. I did a video on a breeding video. So if you know what species I was breeding, common name or scientific name, first one, uh, in the comments wins. And if you're lagging, I see Irie says Mars is lagging hard. Uh, just refresh, just hit the refresh button and make sure that when you look at the screen, you click on the bottom left-hand side live so it lights up and you'll be good. Oh, Alyssa wins. Mexican Red Rump. Congratulations, Alyssa. That is correct. And, uh, you know, like I just said, send me an email to the email address on the screen, the tarantula collective.com uh, with your your name in the, tell me your, your screen name or whatever, but then also in the, in the comment, the subject line live stream ticket winner sticker winner my a ticket <laughs> all right uh and i don't know if she's still in the chat but uh if you saw the collaboration video that uh, i was part of with tarantula cat on her channel if you can tell me what species that uh, her video was about then the first person that answers that in the comments is going to win a sticker as well so it's a tarantula cats uh collaboration video uh, with me and uh, Robbie's talking teas, exotics layer. Uh, who else was in there? Uh, Trent, um, bird spider, ch, uh, reptiliatus, and I'm forgetting somebody. There's somebody. Oh, we got one. Iris is a vicularia. That is correct. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, you want a sticker? So send me uh, an email and to the address that I have on the screen here, and I will get you your sticker sent out this week. That video made me so sad. What video? I may have missed one. Oh, probably the red rum video. Yeah. It made me sad too. I was very, I was very mad at myself. Still am still not happy. Um, all right. Next question. If you know what species of tarantula I put in, uh, th which one this by wait, that bioactive enclosure <laughs> right behind me, which you can't see. Uh, if you know what species of tarantula is in my paludarium bioactive, you win a sticker. Let's see who's got, who's got a good answer. We're waiting. We're waiting. I gotta wrap this up. We're, man, we're gonna hit three hours before I give away all these stickers. 
All right, I see some right answers. First one is Delta Raven. Congratulations, Carab Carabiner Visakov. <laughs> that's obviously not correct spelling, but I know what you meant. Carabiner. <laughs> We're gonna go rock climbing with a Versicolor. But yes, congratulations, Delta. Send me that email address to the Tarantula Collective at gmail.com. Make sure to put a live stream sticker winner in the, the subject. And of course, your address. Uh, hopefully, everybody knows that. The whole reason you're sending me an email, which I haven't mentioned, is you got to give me your address so I can mail it to you. So if you send me an email that says, hey, I won, that doesn't help me because I don't know I don't know where to, where to, where to do it. <laughs> Tyler Guard says, super fans killing here. Yeah, you guys are dang talk to text. Hey, it works, Delta. It's all good um uh, what else we got um oh here, here's a this may be a tough one because i'm gonna have to look it up real quick myself let me see all right i did a video with um wiccan's wicked reptiles it was uh top five reptiles for tarantula keepers that i put up on my on my list if you know what we'll say the, the number one reptile he suggested uh it was kind of I mean, they weren't really in an order but we counted down from five, so it would be the last reptile he suggested. If you know what the last reptile that he suggested in that video, great reptile for tarantula keepers, um, uh, you're, you're going to win a sticker. Uh, and I think in that video, we just, nope, I went by the common name and the scientific name. So either either one will work. I'm going to get you a sticker sent out. If you know what video. Iris says, oh boy, I already won, so I won't say it. <laughs> A GBB, no, I think that was on his video. Like I did a video on his channel where there was a top five tarantulas for, um, oh, we got a right one. Uh, Audric said Western hognose. That is correct. That was the uh, the number one he suggested was the, the Western hognose. So congratulations. Uh, Audric just sent me an email to that address. Uh, let me see how many we got here. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got two more to give away which i'm dropping all over the place and i haven't been keeping very good uh count so that we may give away 11 but we'll see how it goes all right i need uh i need some more questions um james says oh i thought you meant on his video yeah we, you know we could could we do that? Let me see. Uh, excuse me. Let me pull up Adam's content. Check out his videos. He was a good guy. He's Canadian, but I, I, not that that makes him a bad guy. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, but he was. I, I enjoyed uh, hanging out with him and getting to know him during that collaboration. That was a that was a lot of fun. Let's see. So what was the, I got, I got to look and see, even though I made the video. All right, we'll do that. Uh, if you watch Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, uh, top five best tarantulas for reptile keepers. Uh, if you know what the number one was that I included on that list, then you will win a sticker. And somebody already suggested the GBB and that is not what I said was the number one. It was on the list, but it wasn't the number one. Uh, but let's see. Um, james says i'm pretty sure it was the blonde though uh so yes that is right i don't know if you answered that before i i actually asked the question <laughs> so what we'll say is uh james you win and uh also we'll give it to, to joe on exotic because he also had the correct answer afterwards definitely after i had, I had asked the question so uh, both of you all will win. So send me an uh, uh, email to that uh, email address right there, the Tarantula Collective at gmail.com, which is right there. I'm not good at this. Down right there. <laughs> and, and put your name in the, uh, as well as your address in there, and then live stream sticker winner as the subject so I can find it very easily. Um, Arthur Prod Ambassadors had another, uh, what you say, the Animals at Home uh, CA. Such a great link. Target snakes was mind blowing. Yeah, animals at home was uh that was an interesting podcast. That was a great conversation. I enjoyed I enjoyed talking to him. And I feel like sometimes making the podcast is more for me than you guys, like because I get to 
you know, talk to these people, uh, in, in, uh, that I normally wouldn't have had an opportunity to speak with, like, you know, like Dan from Amphibicast. I'm not even dark frogs. He's not really, uh, we're just, we're not in the same state or same area or, uh, really in the same circle most of the time, but having that podcast kind of gives me the ability to meet other people in different aspects of the hobby and have conversations with them and, and get to make uh, friends, I guess, or at least acquaintances. So that was pretty cool. Uh, but guys, we, it's a two hours and 45 minutes. We got to wrap this thing up. So congratulations to everybody that won stickers and uh, thank you for all of the super chats and everybody that became channel members. Uh, that was also, that was very cool of you. If you haven't checked out the new podcast yet, uh, make sure you do uh, just go over to the, my second channel, the exotic pet collective um here on youtube you can check that out i'll also take little clips from that podcast and put it on my main channel here over the next week and make sure you tune in a week from today it'll be next thursday i'll be posting that podcast up on the exotic pet collective on my second channel so if you're not subscribed uh, be sure you head over there and subscribe or you can download the podcast from pretty much spotify anywhere you find podcasts like spotify apple Podcasts, google podcasts buzzsprout uh, wherever amazon alexa i think there's like an amazon podcast and stuff like that so yeah, you can, uh, you can download them and listen to them there. But if you want to see the video version then subscribe to my second channel and, um, and watch that there, but I'm also going to take clips from that podcast and edit them like I normally do and do podcast clips on my main channel. So if you don't want to watch the whole two hour podcast, you can, you know, get a little 10 minute, 15 minute bites. So, uh, yeah. And I think that's about all I've got. I've got some more content coming out this week. Uh, head to my website, the tarantula collective.com. Um, if you want to find some discount codes and links to dealers and suppliers, we've got care sheets on there, photos, links to all my Instagram or all my social media, so like TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, all that kind of stuff. Uh, find anything you anything to do with the Tarantula Collective there, and you can also sign up for a newsletter. I try to put that out at least once a month. Sometimes it's like every other week. Uh, it just kind of has some um, you know, any, any new discount codes that are available. Keep you up to date on that. Uh, you know, new content, things of that nature. So, yeah. Uh, Rat House says, I stepped away. I can't believe you're still going. I know there was a lot of questions. So yeah. And go ahead over to Arthropod Ambassadors. Uh, she's got a free sticker giveaway. Uh, just message her on Instagram and follow Arthropod. She's been helping out um, doing some moderation in the chat. So thank you so much, Aaron, for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. So we're just going to wrap this up. And you guys, uh, amazing live stream, Richard. Richard wants to be your next free giveaway. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll have to just wait and see. I'm, I'm probably, I'm going to try and keep doing live streams at least once a month. I don't know if I can do it any more often than that. Cause I think you guys would get bored of hearing me answer the same questions and talk at length for two and a half hours every week, but we'll see what we can do. If you guys enjoy it, uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, hit the like button. That's one way of showing me that you are enjoying this type of content. And you would like to see more of it in the future. A lot of people are liking it and I'll just have to do it more often. How about that? I'll say that. <laughs> so everybody take it easy uh thanks so much for joining i appreciate all your all support i appreciate all the super chats channel members patreon members likes shares comments you guys are awesome so uh, i definitely appreciate everybody uh you guys take it easy and i will um i'll see you what is today today's thursday so i'm up to learn another video on the channel tomorrow so i'll hopefully see you tomorrow for that uh for that video y'all take it easy and uh i'll see you soon goodbye <laughs>